Hey, y'all. I got to go in there and get my iPad. I was trying to get everything set up and all out here for y'all, so. Hopefully everything goes smooth. So hang on just a minute, Miss Sue. Y'all, let me go grab my iPad so I can sit over here and read comments and not be trying to squint at that screen, be looking at y'all like this. How y'all doing tonight? Been a beautiful day here, y'all. Beautiful day for a dust. <laughs> oh, they gonna let, I'm gonna get to watch one of them ads y'all like so much. Sue, all Dave, all night. Mickey, Brenda, Jay Copeland, Michigan Prepper. Is it cold up there, Michigan Prepper? Jamie Johnston? Well, the grunt was biting the other day when I went down there. Uh, but now the temperature has dropped. Yesterday and today has been a mite chilly. Now, not cold. Right now, we're a little over, looks like about 52 degrees, looking at the thermometer over there right now. Uncle Sasquatch, good evening. So they are biting somewhat. Oh, uh, I don't know how how well, but we geared up and ready to go after them here pretty quick. Oh, uh, I've got some other missions in mind first. Uh, I want to do some more catfish running. We've got the yo-yos I want to play with and. And a uh, good bit of catfish. We had our prime catfishing time. So with the water, we got about a half inch of rain today uh, in this little rainstorm. So it it's not really time for me to start targeting them. I'll take one anytime. My deal though right now is is when I go grunnel fishing, I got to be ready to cook right then. And I, right now I ain't never been. Every fish I have caught in the last week is in there in the refrigerator. We're going to have a big fish fry over at our cabin, the skinning shack and all that, tomorrow night. And uh, all the family, I, we when I do a big fish fry, my mom and dad eat, my, my wife's mom and dad and my brother and them, and there'll be several gathered up that'll eat. And I've got a dish pan slim full of crappie fillets. So, Jimmy Sullivan, good to see you, JL327. Larry Alexander, how are you? 59 to 50 today, snow is almost gone. I imagine y'all about ready to get rid of that from up there, ain't you? So just so that y'all are aware right now, I've got a grill sitting over here just a smolder, and I got four of the finest, biggest, thickest pork chops you ever laid your eyes on on there cooking. So I'll, I, got a, I got my camera set up where all I got to do is twist it around. I can go over there and check on that and get that stuff out. And then I'll probably eat mine. Mama's making potato salad. So a little bit of Friday nights from now on, especially as we get off into the warmer times of year, Friday nights during the live, I'll be doing some cooking back and forth. I won't just be sitting here in a chair the whole time, which is kind of the way I want it. I don't want it to get boring and... But what I need to do is I've got to figure out a way of moving my camera live because I edit out in the videos when I move it around a lot. And uh, i got to figure out how to... to uh, I wish I had a thing I could pull it up and take it around and set it back in there without having to move the whole tripod because if I just pick the tripod up and start walking, them legs is banging stuff and I'm shaking it and make y'all seasick. Uh, 
all day, all night. Well, I, I wondered about that because I have had a lot of people say that, oh, them crawfish can't live underwater. Well, I have thrown them in there with my aerators and stuff running and knew that they'd stayed for months. In fact, live better than most of the bait fish. And I was like, well, that can't be true, you know. I have never done any research on it. The only thing I knew was my experience with it. And and my daddy was one. He's like, son, them got to have air. They got to be able to. So, oh. Uh, now, Brody's two, that them two big ones that he caught, and that turtle is in a rain barrel down here. And I did put a piece of screen wire up on a flower pot in there just in case. But now it does not have an aerator in it, so we kind of play with them. But now that barrel is rain slam full, so it's got fresh water in it again. Travis Nichols. Night Hawk Farms. Trout are not biting yet. Y'all, how many of you have experience with suckers? I mentioned suckers in a video. Uh, I'm, I have never tried to clean one. I have never eat one. But right now, they're in that low water crossing. I don't know if they're spawning or if they're eating algaes. From talking to some people, they eat don't really eat algae and plants. They're eating more critters and stuff off of those plants. I really don't know. I don't know a lot about them, but it's, there's a lot of people swearing that they're really good to eat. Nobody around here eats them. I guess because they can't catch them. Right now, I could go down there and either gig some or throw a cast net and get them. So I'm threatening going and trying it. I don't, I don't know. If anybody's got any personal experience because i have done heard you know well so and so does this and has any y'all actually fried some of them i heard they got a lot of bones in them I, I, that's something else i don't know tommy litchfield Cindy Evans, I'm glad y'all had a good trip. It's always fun. I, I enjoy fishing when I don't catch a thing. I am happy to be there, proud to be fishing. But I'm going to tell you, it's just a lot more fun when you go and, and catch fish. I mean, that's just... <laughs> anybody says it ain't, you know, they kind of... You know, that's just what they say when they don't catch nothing. Everybody likes to catch a bunch of fish. So, Michigan pepper, the bony part, how do you remedy that? Is they, you, Do you need to fillet them a certain way? My my buddy Don Lanier told me, he said to fillet it off, scale it, fillet it off, and leave the skin on the back, turn it over on the belly side, and slice it up, like, long up and down, every quarter inch or something, and fry it, and that'll help fry those bones to where they're not a problem. And I'm, I'm wanting to experience, I've got that smokehouse and I have not run it in the last year. I didn't have no deer to play with in it. I really ain't had anything to smoke in it. And uh, I've thought about since I can catch a bunch of fish and I love to fish, attempting to smoke some fish. I don't know, I don't know anything about smoking fish, but I can cold smoke whatever. And I've got that rack that I can lay them on. So I'm thinking about attempting it on some stuff. Somebody said that uh, bass was good smoked. We don't have trout and a lot of these fish that, that the northern part of the country has that live in the cold water. So we basically got bass, brim, crappie, gar, grunnel, uh, and I mean, there's several pan fish, but uh, then we got the suckers, and, and I wondered about the gar. Make fish patties or something. So somebody tell me the best way to catch a a sucker. Two things that I have never really caught on rod and reel, and that's suckers and gar. Uh, I tried for gar last year, and I didn't have no success. I think I had too big a hook. I tried to rope deal with a gar, and I didn't have no luck with that. 
but I got a spot where I catch some crappie that has got a good mini gar in there, and they would really like to have them out of there. So, and I would like to try them. I mean, I'm up for trying stuff that people here around me personally, I'm sure there's some people that I don't know about eat some odd and different things, but I know of nobody that eats suckers, and I know of nobody that eats gar here. Everybody eats grunnel here, so. I'm looking for knowledge that is not local to my area, that is not just personally handed to me. I want to know how to do these things, so I'm going to learn from you guys. Instead of me teaching y'all, y'all going to teach me this time. You know, you see how this works? <laughs> I have not gigged for suckers, Mickey, but I have got a good frog gig, one of the bigger B&M, not the little bitty, you know, inch and a half wide one. I got like the big four inch wide one. And I may fire up the forge and make me a a new frog gig, fish gig. So I, I down there would be a good place to gig them in that low water crossing. Because they're, I mean, it's less than knee deep and they're all in it. I could go at night with a light and probably, and now that we got new tires on the buggy, hey, I'm all for going and doing it. Can't do it tonight because I'm filming live. Can't do it tomorrow night because we're having a fish fry. So it's leading up to at least Monday night because Sunday night we got church. So my, it'll be Monday before I can even attempt it. And you know, Jay Copeland, I'm I'm I need to rig up one of my longbows for short range shooting arrows. I need to get me a arrow. I mean, those would make some great videos. My problem is is filming stuff at night. I don't have the lighting set up, I mean, to, to make good videos at night. The footage is always terrible. But I still would like to do some of that. Donna, you, that video will be there when we get through. You, you can go back and finish watching it. <laughs> Larry Alexander, I'm not sure. We call them suckers here. I, they're a type of a carp. I, I'm, I'm not. I've got to get one out and inspect it. Uh, Don Lanier sent me some, some information that's got all the different specifications for every different kind of fish that they are. So I've got some stuff to look at to compare them to, and then I've got my fish chart that's on the wall in the shed. So once I actually get a hold to one and look at it, and I can look at everything and then kind of identify it. Uh, right now, I've just seen them swimming in the water. One of them the other day when me and Andrew was down there, when we run through that low water crossing the first time and they all heard it up and there was a bunch of them went out the bank, up toward the bank, one of them had a pink stripe, looked like a rainbow trout, which obviously it wouldn't. I knew it wouldn't, but it just had that look to it. So I don't really know. Deaver Vision, good to see you. Logan, good to see you tonight. Dave, that's what, uh, that is what, um, oh, I can't even call his name, Boundless Pursuit, uh, David, David told me. When we were talking, uh, I've talked with him back and forth. You know, I did the podcast with him last year on ground fishing, or both in, and he was telling me that small hook loose. So I'm going to have to definitely try that, and uh, I want to go down there and catch some gar because I want to try gar. Yeah, Michael, it's, I have to watch what I do down here in public waters. Like, I, the cast net, I think, is all right. I'm not sure. But, like, them trap baskets, you got to be careful with them in public water. That's a no-no. So let me check on my pork chops, y'all. Oh, y'all. I'm gonna let them cook a little bit. Let them cook a little bit.
Y'all know sometimes I get to talking and not paying attention to what's going on over here in the b behind me. So I have to keep an eye on that grill. I don't want my pork chops. What my wife done is went to Sam's the other day and come back with a big old pack of pork chops. They had them marked down. Michael Williams, you're going to have to change your name so I know who it is. Because now I don't know you but by pork chop. I, you, you, <laughs> when you give me your nickname, that done away with your real name. I don't even know it no more. <laughs> Folks grind gar meat and get, make gar balls. I have heard of that too, Tommy. And uh, I want to try that. But I'm going to tell you, first dash out of the bucket, we're going to take that whole long filet out of there and, and cook it whole for summer. And then we're going to fry some. So I need to catch me a, a parcel of them one night on a trip. But now I have, like I said, y'all, I have got so many plans of stuff I want to do. They really ain't no possible way I can make it all happen. It just ain't enough time. And somebody got concerned the other day that uh, the, all, that I was going to go to all lake fishing. Y'all, there is not even a slight chance of that. We are going to start doing some lake fishing because I want to get out and fish more. And I want to fish some places that I've never fished and go on some different adventures and do new things. But y'all, we will never get away from the swamp. The swamp is my first love. That swamp... Y'all, that swamp to me is home. You know, it's like you want to go on vacation. I want to go to the lake and try that out. You want to go on vacation and see some stuff. But it never fails after about three days of vacation. I'm ready to get home. And that'll be the fishing here. That that swamp, y'all, is my heart and soul. And we'll never get away from it. I mean, it's in my backyard. There's no chance of there not being grunnel fishing videos and, and crappie fishing in the swamp. And this year... I want to go take the kayak when the water gets low and uh, or either canoe, either one, and go up into some of these shallow areas where I can find some red bellies, we call them. They're, uh, they're like a, a red-breasted sunfish, and some people call them pumpkin ear or pumpkin seed pan, uh, brim or something like that, but Yeah, Logan, we're going to do some knife-making videos. Uh, I have just, I've had so much other stuff that I wanted to do right now that I'm not, I hadn't even made any knives all winter, really, other than the few that I have done here, there, and yonder to sale and, and stuff. Uh, I've got two or three knives that I have got to get made that I have promised some people. Uh, I'm going to send some out to some people that I wanted to gift one to, and then... Y'all, the 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 lady that won the uh, the giveaway knife the other day, she they turn around and they gave that knife to Sam's grandfather, which is probably in my mind in turn going give it to Sam. I would I would guess. I don't know that, but I. I'm going to remake and give that young man, the woman that won it, she was going to give it to her grandson. And she asked him, she's like, well, do you want to do you want to let Sam's grandfather have this knife? And, well, he was like, yes, yeah, let's give it to him. So I don't really think he wanted a big Bowie knife anyway for, I mean, he would have liked to have had it, obviously, but if he was going to get another knife, he would like to have something more usable. So, we're going to make him whatever he wants, being they won that and then and did what they did with it. So I may film making that knife. I don't know exactly what I'm going to make. I've got several Jonah knives I have got to do, but I don't really film them because I done film doing that to death. Now, it's possible that we get some footage of it. It won't be like a complete how to make a knife video, but we may get some footage of it in with some... Some of those like a day in the life of videos, I enjoy doing those because I can film several different things that people are interested in and it not be a long drawn out how to make, you know, like I'm teaching you how to do something. I'm really trying to get away from instruction videos. I'm more into entertaining you guys while passing on some knowledge. I mean, I want to share with y'all how to do some things so I'm not going to stop doing it, but I don't want to treat every video like this is how you need to do this because 
most things, I mean, there's 10 hundred ways to do it that are all right, you know? So, D Mac, oddly enough, I had a headache today and I have suppressed it with some wild lettuce tincture. Uh, we may pull some down that I've got tincture in and do a video on straining it out and putting it in a jar here pretty quick because I, I need to refill my jars. J. Robinette, thank you, bud. Thank you so much. For some sakale, they're spawning. Yeah, they are. Uh, they spawning up here too, or was right prior to the uh, rainstorm. I took Brody to one of the local ponds right here that a neighbor has. Pretty good size, it's really a small lake. And it's got crappie in it, and they have always been real small crappie in it. It's just overstocked. That's how a pond gets. They don't get fished hard enough. Well, there's been about four of us, four or five of us, for the last three year, two or three years have fished it pretty hard. Because I told the guy that owns the pond, I was like, you need to let a few people crappie fish in here. I said, because it's overpopulated. I mean, you need to get some out. Now, I mean, you don't want to overfish it, but... And you can overfish a lake if you ain't careful. Time you invite 10 people to, yeah, y'all can fish it. And they catch them spawning and they all catch a hundred apiece. I mean, you, you can work them down after they do, you know, two or three trips like that. But I never catch more than what I'm going to cook and eat. So I took Brody up there the other day, the other afternoon. And uh, I wanted to try out my jig pole up there. And I wanted Brody to catch some. So I rigged him up a, a B and m telescoping pole I've got that don't have a reel. That way he, because he likes to go to reeling if it's got a reel on it. And man, we caught several, you know, 11, 12 inch crappie up there. And they was right on the bank. I mean, they was in a foot of water. So when they doing that in the ponds, it ain't just a little bit the lakes they spawning just like it here so yeah it's time for them now i don't know what this cool weather done i'll tell you this i thought well I, I didn't get to catch a lot because i had brody i was trying to help him and i was trying to catch a few to finish out well, i knew we were gonna have this fish fry and i wanted to have enough to have a fish fry so i thought what we took from oak tibby i would go up there and put some more with it and then we'd have enough for a fish fry so I was going to go the next morning and catch just a handful more, and they wouldn't bite a tall. I mean, I had wore them out the day before, but the barometric pressure was changing, so they wouldn't bite not none then. I'm going back, reading back through some of the comments I missed, y'all. David said, take a feed sack full of produce and rocks and sink it in the bend of a creek and fish with a cane pole. So how many are corn? See, I asked my buddy, I was like, well, can't you fish? I've heard a fish home with a kernel of corn. Put it on a small hook, and they, I don't know. The, apparently, there's some videos on YouTube somewhere. There's a bunch of guys catching them with red worms. So I, I'm going to have to look back through that. That's on the suckers now, not the crappie. Yeah, unchained. <laughs> I thought the same thing when I said, when I saw that name. I don't watch a lot of his videos, but I do. I have watched some of them. He's got a really good channel, of, or, you know, if you enjoy canoeing and stuff. <laughs> Laser addict. I was over there using them, them grabbers, I call them. <laughs> the tongs. I don't like that word, tongs. I don't know. It just, I get grabby grabbersons, what I call them. Mickey Brody is at his mamaws. He wanted to stay over there tonight. Yeah, 
Yep. Larry said check the pork chops. We better do that. Michelle, are you ready to check the pork chops? I'm going to check them. Hang on. Hang on. Since I'm probably fixing to get them off, I'm going to turn y'all where you look. I, I know y'all like to look. <laughs> I try to remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Y'all look right there. I'll turn it down where you can see real good. Try to figure out where to put them. I don't have a paper towel right handy. I try not to make y'all seasick, but y'all look at them pork chops. I mean, them things. Now, that in there's got a bone right in the middle of it, but look at that. Y'all cover years, I'm going to holler, Mama, you going to come check these? I like to let her come out here and cut off into one. She ain't heard me yet. She's probably got that TV so loud in there she can't hear herself think. <laughs> we are unsupervised, Alicia. Or is that Dusty? It's one of y'all. Yeah, Tommy, we done throw the scald on it. Yeah, uh, Joey, them, them, these tones, man, this is, we done named them Grabby Graberson. I got my name on there, y'all. These things is good. Hey, Michelle, come see if this is done enough for you. <laughs> I got her attention that time. Y'all, we experiment with some new stuff, and I took one of these cups I made that's got the feathers on there, and I put a new glaze on there, but I ain't real, I don't know. Me, I heard neither one really liked the color that, and I realized that that light over there is throwing a shadow. So anyway. That ain't, I, we, we experiment. I'm trying to come up with something from my fat bottom cups to just put a solid color on there. And I got a brown that I did and I ain't real happy with it either. So, But now, mama got a color she picked out when we was up there at the clay store the other day that she like, looks like blue and white. It's pretty. I'll come show it to y'all. Done. Oh, I can't tell. Hold on. There's a bone right there. This is what I'm watching take place. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, you standing right between the light and the... Camera? No, the light and, you, and the meat. Oh, I think it's done. I think so, too. We're going to eat out here? No, I am. You can. I won't eat them now. Okay. But I'm going to come show them my cup. <laughs> Lazy said, Grabby Grabbers work for me. Grabby Grabberson. <laughs> She's gonna go get that new colored coffee cup. Y'all gonna like it. I'm gonna tell you. It's a if you country now, if you're a city slicker, you might not like it too much. It's a I mean a southern country color. Oh. Uh, Glenn, we're gonna make some some face mugs. And that's one of the things I'm trying to get some colors. And the reason I hadn't made a lot of face mugs, one, I've been busy doing other stuff. But I hadn't come up with a good color that to put on them because I wanted some manly colors, but I want them to look good too. So y'all check these cups right here out. It's like a Yeah, the light up there. I got it. hang on. Let me let me move this right over a little bit and turn that. Now you got a little more room and ain't got a shadow. Y'all see that blue speckled look? That and I did this bowl. Brenda said, hey, Michelle. Hey. So, some of y'all had ordered a cup. And I've got some cups that are shipping out tomorrow or Monday. They came, they were in the load with this stuff. And if you've got a cup that you're waiting on, it should be coming in the mail next week. 
And we did get caught up with our cups. I've got lots of cups out there. So if anybody likes this cup and you want to order one, let me know and I'll add it to the website. You can just tell Justin tonight and I'll put it on there and y'all can order. They, that color is probably going to be, it's probably going to work its way into our line if we can get that glaze in a book. When you're in business, you have to be able to buy those clay glazes, the paint. It's called a glaze, for those of you who didn't know, in, in a large um, quantity so you can come out of here because them little bitty bitty pints that you buy, to, we test out of, they're for hobbyists, and they like $20 for a little old thing. Well, you can't paint, you know, 15 cup, which you, I mean, you can do it, but you don't want to do a whole ship, you know, a, a shipment of to a store of that. It cost each out of house and home. Oh, I gotta show him one more thing. Uh oh. Before I go get in my pajamas, I wanna show y'all what I made for him tonight. Oh, I've Lord. been baking in the oven. I she, saw the lady from. um. I got my belt pulled up into the last hole, y'all. She's trying to get it back out in that other other hole, I think. I saw um, <laughs> somebody was making one on YouTube. This is chess squares. And I made him, and if y'all can see, you can bake in our pottery. So he's gonna he's gonna enjoy these yep. a little bit. The last time she made them, she put them on a big old thing and set them in there, and they lasted about a half a day because she cut them into the little squares and put them on a cookie sheet or something in there, didn't you? Yeah, and we ate them. And we'd come week. through, and everybody when there wasn't nobody looking, we'd get one more, and we next thing we know, the whole plate was gone. <laughs> She's going to put some weight on me here for long. I don't know, y'all. Honest to God, I've been losing some weight. But now, I always lose weight during the winter because I walk so much in that swamp, usually. <coughs> all right. Let me see what all I missed on comments. Grab it and growl. <laughs> That's pretty good. Well, Blair, we're going to, like I said, on the face mugs, we're going to get some. I've got to come up with a good color that I'm happy with that's a manly color. Now, I have all the the colors for our lines that are, you know, like the powder blue and all that stuff. And it's a little more, I'm not going to say effeminate, but it's not really like a man wants on his coffee cup, which it don't bother me. The, the oyster, I really like. And that's, you know, looks real runny. But I wanted something that had a little more of the brown or green and I don't know. I, there's one I can add a different glaze, like mix some glazes together and do this and make it real flat looking. And I really like that, but it's not food safe. So we try to keep everything on our pottery food safe so that you can drink out of it, eat out of it, all that kind of stuff. So. But I think, Travis, I think she's going to add that to the website in there. But I do with that blue right there. I do like that. Just Rhonda, which 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 cup do you want? The blue and the the white. And yeah, we can sign the bottom of it, which we all all of them have Southern Mud pottery engraved into the bottom of them. Did you ever make coffee? Mm -hmm. Did you want me? You gonna wait to eat? No, if you'll bring me something to put, I'll eat whatever. Well, here, you have this plate. Well, it don't matter to me. Keith said to name that color the Blue Tick Hound Collection. <laughs> that ain't a bad thing. <laughs> Call it Blue Tick. Oh, at least them chess squares is fine. You like the green, Larry, on this feather cup? You can see the feathers in there, but barely. I don't know. Just I like it. It's all right, but it ain't. It ain't what I was going for. 
That coffee there done got bad cold. All right. Um. The blue and white. Okay, Rhonda, the, uh, we'll get them on the website. Do you want them to order from the website or? Yeah. It's easier to order from the website. Um, so you're going to add the color here in a little bit so that when they order yeah. there, they can pick that color. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to go to wait a little bit because we ain't got them added yet. She'll add them in a, after she gets through eating. So in an hour or so, go to, or when the live's over. I got the pictures made of them. I just got to. Uh, go them. to southernmudpottery.net and you can, it'll be on there. Diana, I am making some fish plates, and I I do want to make a bowfin plate, a plate shaped like a bowfin. But for me to do it like I want to do it, I'm going to have to make a mold and all the hand form a mold and a whole bunch of stuff. So I really hadn't had time to work on it, but I do have one that's like a big pan fish. I got lucky and found at a thrift store, and I'm working on getting that done. Larry, on some of the other ones, I put that black in the feathers. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna experiment. We're gonna, I'm gonna keep playing with some of this. And uh, in fact, I made me some little round pieces that I'm gonna use for coasters, and we're gonna do some testing on them and see what we can come up with. I don't know. It, we've been watching uh, Matt and Tipper a good bit lately, and I hadn't. He probably thinks I ain't watching them. They, they do because we've got to watching them at night. When we both get in the bed, we put them on on the, the TV in there, and you can't comment. You can hit like. You can very much like stuff with the TV, but you can't comment. You got to get on your phone or the iPad to comment or I don't go back usually and watch the same videos, so I'm sure there's some folks that think I've quit watching their videos because I don't ever comment on them, but I'm watching them on TV in there. I get to where I don't watch stuff on my phone very much, unless it's smaller stuff, unless I'm making pottery, but I've been listening to a book. I've got on some crazy book that's like 30-something hours long, y'all, and it's a modern, I can't even begin to describe what it is, and... <laughs> I got to finish it. I, once I start one, I got to finish. So I've been listening to it, and I ain't been watching stuff down there. Joshua, thank you for watching, bro. And I have got slammed away from fooling with game file a whole lot. Oh. Y'all going to have to sit here and watch me eat this pork chop. I hate for you to, and, and look at this. Y'all, she done made some potato salad. Look at that. Oh, I love potato salad, and I like it yellow. Some folks don't put enough potato mustard in their potato salad. That gum, I got my phone hooked up, Miss Ellie, me low battery. I tell you why, the end of the cord's right there. It ain't helping not one thing. <laughs> Amy Terry, there are four of us wanting to, you to baptize us. <coughs> Where is this at? I can find the time if it's nearby pretty quick. For baptism, we'll make time. Logan, this chair, <laughs> let me tell you about this chair. I was headed to town one day, and the neighbor down here, she throws some junk away. Now, when she throws something away, it's junk. North Alabama. Oh. Uh, well. 
if, if you'll let me do some studying, we've got pottery that we're taking to Boonville. When we deliver it, we make it meet halfway or something, but now, if you want to come here, I'll make time anytime you can come. We'll make it convenient for you, but what I need you to do, Amy, is either get on my Spirit of the Outdoors Facebook page and message me and let me know who you are. If your name's the same, I'll know who you are, but if it's different, let me know who you are. Um... But that way we can converse. If not, email me at justinpeden at gmail and I'll get you a phone number or something where we can, we'll get it set up because y'all, what I do for the Lord is number one. I put it before anything else I do. And speaking of that, I done took two or three bites. Y'all gonna have to forgive me. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for this food. We pray that you'd bless it to nurse our bodies that give us strength and help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I did that on my Instagram the other day. And them folks on Instagram, I reckon, had never seen me without a bandana on. They thought I was going to be bald-headed. They was a mite surprised. I'll have to check. I'll have to catch up on these comments because I don't want my pork chop to get cold right here. Mmm. I put that eat them raw seasoning on there. All them bushcraft people, they want a, a blade on a knife an eighth of an inch thick. An eighth of an inch thick knife won't go through that fork. And the number one thing I'm going to do is eat with it. And there's no telling what I've skint with it, but I do wash it occasionally, y'all. If not, I'll wipe it on my britches leg. <laughs> I believe that's a homemade roll, too, if I had to guess. But that potato salad right there, I like potato salad. And y'all, she made me some deviled eggs the other night. And you know Brody wouldn't even try them. Brody's a mite picky. Rhonda, get up with me. Come, I will definitely baptize you. Seth, how do you ever find any artifacts in around the swamps? I have found one arrowhead in my whole life. But y'all, we don't have rocks here. We don't have, I feel like most of the Native Americans here used bone tips. I mean, there are some arrowheads around in places. They have been found but there's not an abundance of them like, like places that had an abundance of rock. If they had arrowheads here, they had to walk up and trade for them with the Cherokee Indians or somebody. Tennessee, that is Jonah. The one and only. Well, it ain't the only, but it is the one. <laughs> The one that got the name that started the whole. <laughs> but what I like about it is I can stick it right in between that fork and I can cut you know, a hunk of meat. Y'all eat a hunk of meat? And y'all don't know how I'm fighting that urge to pick that pork chop up and just go to chewing on it. But I have grease from ear to ear. But it'll happen here shortly. Because I ain't shy. 
I just wanted you to see I did have a little bit of manners. Not a lot, a little bit. Tommy, y'all got some uh, rocks down there, though. Jared, show what steel do you use in Jonah? This is a, a tenue saw blade. My dad uses them to cut metal tubing every day. And uh, so what we do when he uses them, they got carbide teeth, and they are already tempered, according to the website, to a 62, I think, Rockwell so I grind them real slow as to not affect the temper, and then I don't have to do nothing. Just takes me a little longer to grind one out, because I'll grind it and then dip it in water and grind it and dip it in water, and that's why. And I and I know people. I get a lot of messages. People want one of these knives, and I refuse to take orders on them because. Not that I don't want to make everybody a knife. I wish I could, but I'd have so many orders I could. And I had to push the price up, y'all. I, I mean, $150 is high for a knife. And I don't think that they're just like the greatest knife ever was. And like, But, y'all, if you don't push the price up, it ain't worth fooling with them. And then you got to eliminate some of the people want one. I mean, it's, it's kind of awful to say that, I reckon. But... Steel at $150, it's not a time, the time that goes into it and the material and all that stuff, you just, you still ain't really making nothing. I mean, you got, these are over a day's worth of work in a knife. And, and I know people think, well, you're just full of yourself $150 a knife. And I'm not, it's just that you have to kind of eliminate some of the people. Maybe there'll come a day when I can make a bunch of them and do things differently. But now, y'all, I'm just making them out there on an old flat belt grinder with them little short jobs. If I had a grinder with a 72-inch belt, I might could do them faster. So here we go with the pork chop. And I got a plate full of them sitting here and need to, need to go in the house. So my rule of keeping my weight in check, I eat one plate full of food and then I'm done. In a little while, I'll come back and work on that sweet in there. But I don't want it as soon as I get through eating. A lot of people, as soon as they done eating, they're looking for something sweet to go with it. And I ain't against that. I just don't do it. My belly be so full from this, I can't fit it in. Y'all, that pork chop there was, I promise y'all, was as good as a steak. And a whole lot cheaper. Ah, oh, well. I washed my knife. <laughs> I ain't gonna let that meat go to waste. And Roscoe has went MIA. A little short of bone. Every time we turn around, one of the neighbors has got a dog in heat and Roscoe, he he's We're gonna wind up having to have him fixed. I bad hate to. But I'm afraid he's going to get off up here one of these places where there's a dog in heat. When we know it's going on, we keep him in the house. Today, I'd let him get out and go use the bathroom and ride to the mailbox on the buggy. Well, I wanted to ride on them new tires a little bit. And we got off the buggy, and I was fooling with Roxanne. I had her chained on there because I didn't want her to get muddy because she's in the house, and it mud everywhere she's 
comes in, she'll be covered with mud. And then by the time I turned around, he was gone. So I don't know which neighbor's house he's going to. I did, I'd go find him. Mm. All right. I've done enough to that. Let me get a paper towel. All right, y'all, on to business now. See what all here I have missed. So anyway, Logan, I was talking about the chair and got sidetracked. I went to leave and the neighbor lady had set this chair out there by the road. And I looked at it, I was like, man, that chair looks all right. So I went on to town, come back, and I forgot about it. I got on a buggy and went back down there the next day. And the bottom of these rockers had rotted. So I flipped it upside down and cut me a thin strip of oak and bent it over where it'd have a smooth. Then I put wedges in there and stapled it down. Got me a good chair out here. It is a wore out piece of old. So anyway. Yeah, Keith Page, you two needs to fix the comments on TV where you can. I don't know. You got to use that arrow thing. It may be more of a problem in it. <laughs> I struggle with what I got. Tennessee, do I have a preference on fishing gear? Yes. I like a bait caster. And I'll tell you why. It don't tangle up as much as a spinning reel. It don't matter what I do. When I'm fishing with a spinning reel, I wind up with one of them wind knots, especially in the smaller, like, four-pound line. I don't have that much trouble with my 30-pound, well, my 15-pound big game line. Um, I've got an Abu Garcia reel that I've got that on, and I don't have a lot of trouble out of it. But now them little mini reels, every one of them, and I don't think it has nothing to do with what reel it is, that line gets that memory and it gets somehow tangled up. And usually it's because when you're reeling it up, you don't reel it up tight like there ain't a lot of weight on there and it's kind of reeling up loosely. But man, it drives me nuts when they do because they get hard to untangle. If I tangle up my bait caster, I can pull it tight and then roll it backwards and it'll kink right there somewhere and I can pull that up and usually it'll come right on out. Now, I ain't talking about like bird nesting a big wad, but I like a bait caster. And I'm getting, I've got parts ordered from my dad's old Abu Garcia 5000 that I've got. And I got two of them from, uh, 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 Linwood Vowel that I traded for last year, and I love them, but I'm going to get the one that my dad gave me years and years ago. I grew up, that's the one I learned to bass fish on, and we're going to put new parts in it and get it back working. So Unchained did ask, where's the pup, Roscoe? Roscoe's off chasing women. On Joel Osteen, I'll be honest with you, I don't have a problem with him, but now he is, he's, 
I, I really hadn't listened to him enough to sit here and and say very much about Joel Osteen. Uh, I do know some things about him and what he thinks and believes that I disagree with, but because I disagree with somebody and what they think is not enough really reason for me to to talk bad about them. In other words, because all of us have one Bible and we're all trying to interpret it and say what it means. But I base more what I believe off of my personal experience and what I know versus what somebody told me. So that's, I, I'm not going, I'm not going to have negative talk about, you know, because I, that ain't good either. That looks bad on me, but we got some things we disagree on. I'll just leave it at that. There's a big You know, I didn't think about that. Pork chops watching me eat a pork chop. Brian from Poverty Hill showed up. Rhonda, thank you for sitting there watching me. I, I do appreciate it. I'm trying to get caught up on the comments where we can have an honest-to-God conversation. Chris, I, I felt like it was an honest, $150 on a knife was just a good honest price for, for what I'm doing. And I realize mine have a little value because of the YouTube channel and the history behind it and you seeing the knife and it, I mean, it just gives some more story to, to owning a knife. I mean, it's like me. I would buy something that from somebody that I watched versus just go and, you know, buy one off the shelf somewhere else because it ain't really about the quality of knife. It's about the story that goes with it. So, you know, but I don't think a lot of myself to think, well, hey, my knives is better than somebody else's. I, you know, it ain't that. Yeah, old Roscoe's out rambling, y'all. Roscoe is on the, on the prowl. <laughs> the preacher said he's gone forth to multiply the earth. People keep wanting Roscoe, little baby Roscoe's. I hadn't got one, but I don't want to. Minnesota. I bet it's cold up there. But you ain't far from Michigan, so it may not be too awful cold. I've got Tennessee, I've got some patch knives that, that I need to get cut out. I've got some pieces of steel where I made the Jonas the tops of them saw blades. It's just long enough for a, a, a patch knife. So I need to get some cut out and made, and I need to do that here before too awful long. I have sold that rocking chair. <laughs> oh. Dwayne Gerard, good to see you from West Virginia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Rhonda is from the Panhandle of Florida. Good folks down in Florida, which I'll be honest with y'all, I have found good folks in about every state that I have been around. So, I, and I've got, which I've never been up in north, and I know there's some good folks on here that is from up that way, so... I believe there's good people everywhere now. I, I used to not think that, but. Matt Douglas said, judge a man by the fruit. I believe that, Matt, with all of my heart, I believe that's how you judge a fellow. He can say what he wants to, but you watch what he does and, and what, what he produces, and that's where you know what, where the rubber meets the road, because you can't hide that. 
J. Robinette, the 4,600. I think I have wound up with three of the red 5,000s. And the one that I'm fixing, my dad had it in a shed. It was in an old tackle box or a toolbox, actually, with some sockets and stuff. And I got it out and put it on an old reel. And all we ever have was Zebco 33s. And y'all, before we get there, I like the Zebco 33s. They just now are not what they used to be. So the ones you buy now are not near the quality of the ones you bought back in the 80s or early 90s. I don't know at what point they started going bad. I just know now when you buy one, it don't hold up like the other ones. But anyway, I dug that thing out and put it on a reel and started bass fishing. That was my introduction to bass fishing. Nobody showed me how to bass fish. Me and one of my buddies down here, we would walk across the road from his house out to a little old cattle pond. It wasn't big as nothing, and it had some two to three pound bass in it. Oh man, we was in we we just had we started fishing with plastic worms. It was the greatest thing. We was catching bass and we was just throwing them back in the water. And we got to fish in several different ponds and I learned how to bass fish like that. And then we got to fish in the swamp and so that's the reel that I learned to love bait casters on. So it's just special to me. It was my dad's and I learned on it and I wanted. So what happened to it is the pawl in it where it moves back and forth, the line guide. So I ordered the little gear that goes in there, the little spiral gear that moves the guide back and forth and then the pawl that goes in it. And I've got those two parts ordered from eBay. They was like $15. So I'm going to re refix that. I'll probably do a video on that. So... Alum to tan a hide. I have used, I use alum to pickle it. I, aluminum sulfate now. I don't know if alum tanning, you may be talking about something different. Tennessee, I will. Uh, I, what I need to do is start writing down everybody that's interested in a knife so that if I put them on my Etsy store, Etsy's going to skim a little off the top of it, which is okay. I mean, it's easier to do that so that, you know, it's a kosher deal, and I just put them on there and first come, first serve. I don't have to act like I picked favorites, you know. So that is the reason I'm going to Etsy, but I've got some I wanted to make for some people, and I just hadn't found the time to get all of that done, but... We are going to get some made, probably some, and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to get some made, is I need to raise some money to buy me the depth finder for the rear of my bigger boat. I got my tires bought. The tires is bought and on the buggy. I put them on the picture today. Y'all, the buggy has got new shoes on it. It's got truck tires on it. I'm tickled to death over it. So I need to get a, a fish finder for the rear of my boat and that's really only things that i've been wanting for a while and then so yeah i've watched forged in fire You're talking about Logan over around Talladega County and any of there. I have been through there just briefly. And I have been up around the Coosa River up that way a, a time or two. Montana isn't so bad. I would love to come, come see Montana. One day I'm going to get to do that. New Sam scratch sighting. Hmm. Sasquatch sighting. Is that what we're talking about? I'm lost. The inside parts was metal. Now they got plastic. Yeah, that's on them Zipco 33s. I've got a one or two of the older ones, but they got some problems with them. But it's because they wore out. They old. The one... The better one that I have has a major problem. I don't know how it happened, but where the line comes off and goes around a little bail part, something happened. We was hung it up, and the line actually cut a little small groove in that 
thing, well, now every time the line, it catches right there, and it won't throw right. And I have sanded and sanded and sanded, short of it, sanding a hole in it, cutting it in two. So I don't know. I'm... Outdoors, I, I've had a bunch of folks saying that they've been having their comments deleted and this, that, and the other. Oh, Century, Alabama. I don't really know right where Century is. Yeah, Dave, I've seen Richard up there on the Coosa and the little Tennessee River. He's all up in North Alabama up there. David, that braid line, it has pros and cons. The pros are, I like the fact that if I tangle that jig up, I can just about pull it free. Uh, I did break it the other day on one, but uh, it, it got hung good. The cons to it is that stuff, y'all, oh, Lord, it'll tangle up. I mean, before quick. I throwed it, I was sidearm trying to, cause I had some limbs over me and I was trying to sidearm pitch out there and there was some limbs there and I just had a little hole. And that's the way all of that swamp is when you're bank fishing, you gotta pick and choose your places. So when I pitched it, I missed a little bit and I throwed right over a small little old limb sticking out and the bait went right over it. Well, I went to hop it back up, you know, pull it up to where it would hang. And there was a bass about this long, grabbed the bait. So I'm over a limb, and I got a bass hanging on it, and I start trying to pull it over. Well, it uh, it twisted it up, wrapped around everything before I knew what was going on. So I had to wade out there, near about waist deep, to get my stuff untangled. And normally I would have just cut the mess loose. Well, I had a bass out there. And in fact, I think when it went over the line, I think what happened is I pulled it, and actually it wrapped around the thing instead of, coming over is what happened and when it went back down in the water the bass grabbed it because i had it already wrapped around the line before he got it because otherwise i would have just cut it but i had a fish on now i couldn't turn it so i had to wade out there and get it and uh now i will say this i've got braid on one of my bigger it's like a catfishing rig but i used it grunnel fishing with a cork and cut bait and you've seen me fish with that pole. It's got braid on it, and I'm not a huge fan of it, but I have never had problems with it tangling up like this. This is that eight-pound test, and it tangled up, so, I, you know. And i tell you something else, Matt Douglas, and not you can tie. That stuff is hard to tie a knot because, you know, when you twist around a mono around a hook well you got a, a hole right above the eye where i tuck back through and i guess it all depends on which knot you're tying i probably need to adjust which knot i use the most but it's it that when you do it with that braid and you twist it around i mean it's it's closed up right tight against the top of the hook so you ain't got nothing to go through to tie my little cinch knot i like to use so it's 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 different, and probably more so me not getting used to it yet is the bigger problem. But I will say it it tangles up quick. <laughs> Wade Boudreaux, I do know how to pronounce your name. I had a bulldog that was Boudreaux. Are you kin to the Boudreaux that started that bloodline of pit bulls? Keith, the, the, the fact with brands is now in this country, brands and companies made here, there's not people, especially the younger generation that's working now, and I'm not saying all of them because, like I said, there's still a lot of good people out there. There's still a lot of people that have pride in what, they're, what they do. I mean, I know some. They're hard workers, so it's not anywhere near being everybody. But when you take talking about the whole majority of people that's in America and you take the, the, the generation that's in the workforce right now, 
they're all about me and my check and that's it. They're not really concerned about this product. It's about let's make more of a product to make more money. And, and you know, so you're forced to really nothing is any better than anything else. You know, I, I mean, sadly, I wish it wasn't that way. Honest to God, because I am a small businessman. I We've got pottery, but it's hard to find people to work like me running a business. I have tried to hire people to make pottery. And I get some people that come in there that can make pottery, but either they take way too long to make it where you're not making no money, or either it's not near the quality of pottery that I don't look like my, it's not my, and you, you just can't find people to do what you do. You know, I mean, and it's that way across all. So you could have somebody that owns Zebco 33 line of fishing reels and they be caring about their product. And if there's a whole bunch of people on them that don't care, that's just there for a check, well, they gonna struggle to make a quality product. I don't say they can't do it because it's more about your quality control. But at some point, there's some stuff going to slip through the cracks just because you really ain't got no choice because you done got all this made and got all this money sunk into it, and I need some returns. I'm going to have to sell something to get some money back. To You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, just because, well, I'm not happy with this product, we're going to throw all these in the garbage, and then there goes all your profit and sinks your business. I mean, I just understand how some things work and how we got there. And it's like that with a lot of stuff. I mean, I made somebody mad this past week with them Stanley thermoses. And the fact of the matter is, is I don't have a brand new Stanley thermos. The ones I've got are 20 or 30 years old. I bought them vintage, antique, whatever. And, and they've just lost their ability to stay warm. Well, instead of me going and buying another brand new Stanley Thermos, I bought a Yeti because I know them Yeti products work. Are they the best on the market? Probably not. They're overpriced. They're expensive. But you know what? I wanted something to put my coffee in that kept it hot. <laughs> and, and Yeti is one of those products that I know that will do that. And it's for the most part, is a good product. It's not like some of the other stuff. So I bought it, you know. Yeah, you can buy some Ozark Trail stuff. that are, I've got some cups that'll keep my coffee just as hot as the Yetis will. But with their quality control and their line of products, they've already been produced and got a good name and a good reputation. And you guarantee that most likely you're going to get a good product. What was another $30, you know? So that was, but I made somebody mad when I said my, my Stanley didn't, didn't, I got tired of lukewarm coffee. That really burnt somebody up. They got smart on there and I had to, I had to block them. But I, I mean, I don't have anything against Stanley products. I like Stanley products, but it just, mine's old and it wouldn't keep no, my coffee warm no more. So I chose to buy me a big Yeti thermos that would, that would keep my coffee. Y'all, I done got my iPad all out of wonky jaw out of whack here. Yeah. I can't find the comments no more. How does it manage to keep doing it? Y'all, it, it, it gets all, I can't read nothing. Oh Lord, what have I done now? I done lost a whole mess. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Where is it at? Now I got to watch my ad again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, uh, anyway, anyway. I I used to fish some spider wire. I got on that big game tri lane and I like it. 
I don't know that it's better than anything else. I just, that's what I got to use it and it worked well for me. So creatures of habit, when you find something you've had success with, you tend to just kind of that be your thing, I guess. I'm, I don't really feel like it's probably better than anything else. All right, I'm going to have to start this over. It is all kind of wonky-jawed. I mean, really. How in the world? start slam over <laughs> me and technology for me to make youtube videos and be filming constantly with a phone and and editing on a computer and all that me and technology sometimes y'all just we don't g haul i gotta find where, where, where i was you know see if we can, oh yeah we back with chat now y'all i can talk at you again <laughs> Rhonda, you got you a cup order. I'll get that made. We'll get it'll you know, be bear in mind it'll take at least two weeks to get it made, glazed, and all that. Now, right now, being that there is some cups out there, we may can may not be quite two weeks on a cup right now, but it could very quickly get there. So anyway, we'll get it made and get it to you though. Yeah, Diana, I, I've, I've, when I get ready to buy something, I'll buy it, and then I'll tell people I like what I bought, and it never fails. There'll be somebody that, that takes it the wrong way. Y'all, there's a thousand products out there, and everybody needs to use whatever they like. It's like this refrigerator I did. You know, I did a review on it, and they asked me to, sent me a free refrigerator to, to do a couple of videos. I'm going to have to do a couple of videos and several pictures to send to them. And no big deal because, you know, I've never had one. Is it better than another brand of refrigerator? Well, I don't know. I've never had but the one, and uh, I'm going to see what it does. So it's not that you're saying like this is better than everything else. And the one thing is like with Timu. Well, they some people that's like adamant that, that Timu is of the devil and you're supporting communism and all this kind of stuff. And the thing that people fail to realize is if you buy American-made products, 50% of the time you're supporting somebody that has views that you're totally against and you're supporting that. So take in your political opinion. You're either Republican or Democrat. And right now, both of those sides adamantly hate the other side. And when you buy an American-made product, 50% of the time, you're supporting the people that you don't like and supporting their agenda and what they're doing. And somebody told me the other day with well, the team who said, well, you're supporting communism. I'm like, well, at least I'm supporting it in another country. I'm not supporting communism in my own country. So <laughs> that was just my, you know, I don't think we really got serious communism in our country, but I just, <laughs> that was my <laughs> answer to them. <laughs> but it don't matter what you buy, what you do, there's somebody that ain't going to like it. And, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, look, I like this and you like that, but we can still like each other. But some people don't see it that way. And when they get on my channel and be a smart aleck to me, I'm going to be a smart aleck back to them most of the time. And then I'm probably going to hide them after I give them a chance to read that comment I just sent to them. Then I'm going to block them where they can't send nothing else. Oh. Um. Larry Alexander, you ain't going backwards. It's just going by so fast. It, at some point in life, we get comfortable as people with what we like. And I'm good with it. I'm going to tell you one that got me the other day. And it messed me up big time. 
that Takarta Bible app that I use a lot, I've, I have used it so much and I knew how to go in there and hit search and man, I could, I could search a word in the Bible and I could find every time it was in the Bible. And I mean, I just, I already know enough about what's in the Bible that if I'm looking for a scripture, I know a couple of the words in it and I can type those words in and boom, find that scripture. Because I mean, I, I pretty well know what's in there. I just don't know right where it's at and what chapter and verse and all. I can't quote it. I don't know it word for word. I basically just kind of generally know what it says. So I, I was at church and I got to where I don't take my Bible a lot, except on like Wednesday night Bible studies. If I want to write some notes in my Bible, I take my, my uh, Thompson chain and I keep, I write notes in it. So when I have thoughts, that's where I, the Bible I want to write and study in. Uh, I don't really like it for just general reading. So anyway, I pulled up my Takata Bible app, and they had changed the whole layout and the way it works, and it threw a monkey wrench in me. Oh, Lord. I finally figured it out, and they probably actually improved it, but it really threw a kink in my way of, of doing that. I, I was comfortable with the way it was, and I'm like, please just leave it alone. I'm used to this. Just leave it alone. But no, somebody with some new ideas has got to come along, and that's what we're going to make it better. You know what I mean? When something's as good as it can get, why are you still trying to make it better? It works. It's functional. How much better do you want it to be? <laughs> and that's what happens to I mean, technology, is, it's just passing us, you know. Because we get comfortable with something. And... Diana, I'm going to be honest with you. When you talk about the stealing your personal information, this day and age, your personal information is already gone. You have no privacy at this point. Once anything is entered into a database, everybody's got it that wants it. I mean, it's just a fact. You can, you can quit worrying about your stuff being stolen. Uh, now, the deal with credit cards and debit cards, if if you're concerned about ordering stuff, my suggestion is get a prepaid card and just put an X amount of dollars on there. But now my bank here in town, FDIC, FD, F, yeah, FDIC, I've had my stuff, my information is stolen like two or three times in the last 10 years, which is not much. And... Usually it happened from a local convenience store where I bought gas. And they would steal the information some way and said, and one time it was from a, a bar back in my drinking days. I think they stole it from a bar we had went to, but you put get a prepaid card and you don't have to worry about somebody stealing information. Otherwise you can go and um uh, the the FDIC, they've always replaced my money that come up missing. And they've never got more than two or three hundred dollars. So So for the ones that are wanting to know, I added the cups. Rhonda to the said she done ordered hers. Yeah, I saw one come through, but I hadn't got a chance to see what it was. Who so there's so I added added the cups and I also added to where you could order in the casseroles, the gravy bowls, um, and the little dip bowls. They can't see you. In that color. Oh, I don't like to be on camera live. <laughs> Y'all here, she's talking about that them dishes in that color. She's got you you added several pieces that has that color. Let right? me bring it back out here in case somebody wasn't on there when we were. Well, sir, I have I have messed it. All I gotta do is tilt this thing down one time and it really throws a monkey wrench in my there. I figured it out again. Matt, we are, I, I, there is some chartreuse colored shirts on the website now. They're in a wicking, that dry moisture. I think I put several colors on there. I am going to add some more. The, the, the moisture wicking shirt is the only one that I could get a chartreuse lime green colored shirt in. But I want to get a blue logo on some of them. So... I, I hadn't got that done yet because my daughter has to make the logo. 
Okay, so this is the cups. And this is a bigger piece in that color. In case somebody wants to order the casserole or the gravy bowl or something like that that I've added in this color on the website. So you won't be able to see an actual picture of the casserole with this glaze done on there because um we hadn't made one yet, but I do have this glaze and I can do it any of the pieces that we have. So just in case somebody went on earlier and saw the didn't see the cup. There it is. And they're on the website now. It's www.southernmudpottery.net. I'll give it back to him now. All right. Y'all, I have to say, I enjoy making pottery. It's fun. And I'm going to tell you, when we when we experiment with new colors, me and her both like a kid at Christmas up there at that keel trying to crack a lid and look in there to see what it come out looking like. Of course, some of my stuff come out a little bit disappointing. I, I, You know, I ain't talked her into no coffee. This one came out thick, too. I mean, this cup, uh, this is probably as thick a heavy a cup as I have ever made. So, I don't know how it come out so thick. But anyway, it all. Mother's Day is not far away. Alicia, that'll be a, a good country to have a collection of i mean that the look of it I, she spotted it and yesterday i was like I, it reminds me of the blue willow i mean obviously it's not blue willow it's got designs but the colors you know the but and it, but it's white and blue like that is a country look and i don't i don't know of any other potters using those colors right now and i like for our stuff to be unique but i enjoy making pottery it's it's a lot of fun especially when you can stop and create some new things it gets old when you're doing the same thing over and over and over blue tick i seen somebody said how can any self-respecting bama fan have a boat called a war eagle I'm going to be honest with you, Ken. I probably ain't a self-respected Bama fan no more. As long as, as college football goes along, Alabama will be the team that I pull for. But in the last three to four years, I have watched very little football. I don't think I even watched a game this year. Uh, and I don't think I watched one last year. The year that, uh, I can't even think of his name now, the last national championship they won, I guess it was in 2020, I just, I didn't watch a game that year and they won a national championship. I just, and it really ain't so much the politics in it because I, they ain't a lot of politics in it now. They was at the time. It was getting a whole bunch of rigmarole going on that I just didn't like. Um... And the reason was it wasn't, it's just that I, I think, you know, people here who watch football leave your politics out of it. That's like musicians coming out and telling who they voting for. And all. I could care less who you vote for. We don't like you for your political opinion. Uh, your political opinion, how smart you are and how, how intelligent you are, politics means nothing to me. Uh, you know, we want to hear you sing or act or whatever it is you do, and that's it. That's all we like you for. That's what you're good at. And, I mean, that's like me coming out here and telling you who I'm going to vote for and who I like and what I think. You know, I'm not no politician. I, what difference does it make who I like and who I vote for? It ain't going to – I mean, I might not be right. You know what I'm saying? So I got away from the – but the biggest deal with the, with the football was is after I quit watching it for a while, I realized I was like, you know what, it's taking way too much of my time. And then I got convicted about it. I was like, you know, it really was like – a big part and I just so I really don't care now I have always pulled for the Mississippi teams when they was playing anybody else I've pulled for Mississippi State and Ole Miss if they play in somebody I pull for home teams you know because I, I I got a lot of family and friends that are diehard Ole Miss or Mississippi State fans and and you know I pull for their team I hope they win um uh, but it just ain't important to me no more it don't <laughs> it just does not excite me like it used to. I mean, poor Brody will, will grow up now and not even getting to know what football was all about.
I'm reading it. I'm trying to get caught back up. Fishing with Perkins. Hello in tips for beginners on YouTube. The number one tip is don't watch the statistics. Do not look at how fast it grows. Do not look at views. Do not look at subscribers. Do YouTube because you like making videos. Watch your own videos. Sit down and watch your own videos. Because if you can't watch them, nobody else is going to watch them. You know what I mean? I mean, if you don't want to watch them, they don't, nobody else want to watch them. Now, unfortunately, at this point, I don't get to watch all of my own videos because I put too many out there and I don't have that kind of time. But for a long time, I did. And, and the reason I say watch your own videos is because sound is different on your computer than after it is published through YouTube. So you can adjust and, and fix your sound problems. But you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about what's going on. And it's just... You'll, figure, you'll learn things. So watch your own stuff and then don't look at the numbers. Don't do it. You... you you can make a living on YouTube one day, but you won't in the first five to ten years, probably. I'd rather hunt or fish than watch a ball game. I'm right there with you, bro. I'm telling you. I spent a lot of Saturdays I could have been squirrel hunting or deer hunting watching a ball game, and it didn't change my life not one bit. And Tommy, they do. Football's like a religion, you know? Rhonda, I'll try to remember to, uh, to sign the bottom of... Uh, if... I have, it's hard to sign into the, to the clay because we write Southern Mud Pottery on the bottom of all the cups. If I make one here pretty quick, I'll, uh, I'll try to sign it into the clay, but. Jody Floyd, could you add a little orange to the blue? You know, it's odd. I, orange is one of my favorite colors. I mean, when I just, in general, I, I, the Harley Davidson I bought was, they called it Tequila Sunrise, and it was a beautiful orange color. I love orange, and orange and blue is a good color combination, but I ain't no Gators fan, but more power to y'all that are. That's like, uh, 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 um, Oh, now, y'all names escape me. I can have it on the tip of my... Lloyd Morris, he was... He come up to the benefit, and he's from down around Lauderdale. <laughs> he's a big Tennessee Volunteers fan, and we was talking about something. He was... I didn't catch it right at first, but he just kept saying it looked good in, in orange, and I was I, oh, yeah, orange and white. But I, you know, I'm not one of those, those, uh those people that think I got to hate everybody else's team for mine to win. I, and that was one thing as an Alabama fan that grated my nerves the most is it, it wasn't enough, you know, to like for the team that beat you to, for them fans to have a lot to say, which is perfectly okay. It was always the people over here that didn't have a dog in the hunt wanted to have a lot to say. And you're like, really this, I mean, that kind of, it just, that's what gave me the worst. I hated that. I mean, if your team beat Alabama, by all means, brag. That is what it's all about. But when you pulling for, you know, <laughs> some little old school over here that ain't won nothing and I don't know when, and then you're going to talk big because a good team beat Alabama? I mean, really. I... So, anyway. Late, but I made it. Chris, I'm glad to see you here. What was my previous job? Well, I have had a lot of hats over the years. That's why I have learned how to do so much different stuff. I landscaped for about four years, and then I went into the diesel mechanic, and I did that for five, six, seven years. I don't remember. Uh, did diesel mechanic work on 18-wheelers and then heavy equipment for two years. I had a service truck that I drove and run it at a Ford Super Duty. 
It had a 7.3 liter and a million miles, well, about two or 300,000 miles on it, crane and all that stuff. And I enjoyed that. And in 2009, the recession hit, I went and helped my dad weld for four years. I spent four years of my life with my dad welding. Best four years of my life because we spent time together we had never spent together in, in our life. And then from there, I went to metal roofing and putting up metal buildings, which enabled me to build this house that you see. And uh, I learned a lot of stuff over the years. But I probably the metal roofing I did about 10 years, and that burnt me out, and I went to pottery. So Logan, good to see you tonight. Have a good night. We'll catch you on the next one. Glenn Forrester, I'm right there with you on that Super Bowl. I, and people argued over that and talked about how the NFL was scripted and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, who, who cares? I mean, we all watched wrestling for years and we knew it was fake. I, I mean, <laughs> that's like them talking about Taylor Swift, y'all. I ain't mad at Taylor Swift. I don't care who she votes for. I don't care what she sings. I didn't like her when she come out in country music. I mean, I remember the very first time I ever heard her sing, she was on the Riverfront concert in Nashville, Tennessee, on the Cumberland River, and they was doing live music, and she was down there singing. And, y'all, this is back in the early 2000s. And I'm like, who in the world is that? She can't carry a tune in a bucket, and she still can't. They just got plenty of technology to fix it up. I didn't like her then. I didn't like none of her music. All she done was whined about every boyfriend she couldn't keep. And I knew that before that got to be a thing, but people keep talking about it because it's the truth. I just didn't like her. And then they talk like, oh, Beyonce has done made a country song, and I'm like, it, you ain't got to make a country song to be country nowadays. <laughs> I mean, that ain't what we listen to ain't country. So I don't listen to a radio. I go down there in my little pottery shop and I turn a book on. <laughs> That's what I listen to, a book. And when we was riding the other day, we listened to Bluegrass. We put on an album, old album, from a band called Old and In The Way. Y'all ever heard of them? If you've never listened, if you like Bluegrass, Old and In The Way is Jerry Garcia from The Grateful Dead. And they had some bluegrass music, and it's actually pretty good. And that's what we listen to that. And then I listen to old Ricky Skaggs some. So that's kind of my taste in music if I'm going to be out riding the roads and listen to any music. And then sometimes when I'm working on pottery, I will put on classical music. I like the London Symphony Orchestra. I can't tell you the names of all their songs, but I know I like to hear it sometimes. Nope, we ain't hatched any black game file yet. They are laying eggs right now, though, so I'm going. I'm just leaving them in there. I hadn't put anything in the incubator. I hadn't even turned the incubator on. Chris, my brother-in-law that I was doing decent mechanic work for was the best mechanic that they was in this part of the country, hands down. But sad thing is when i got out of it it wasn't long after that the drugs got him and a good man good mechanic good everything went downhill and it ruined him to this day he ain't worth knocking in the head so i've heard of a fellow named ronnie van zant he had a brother if i ain't mistaken named johnny van zant I think he might have died in a plane crash or something. Irish pub music on long road trips. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know they make earbuds for a reason, Alicia. <laughs> Tell him to put them in. I come in the other day and my daughter was in here, had Duck Dynasty. She is binge watching. And, and I, I like Phil Robertson and all them, but the show had just... They run out of good ideas, and I got burnt out on it. I quit watching it, but it's still funny. So I sat down and watched them, and they was doing some Irish stuff. They went to Scotland or somewhere to check out, I guess Scotland. 
to check on their ancestors. Well, my people are Scots Irish. And them bagpipes have been playing. I said, you know, that don't sound too bad, but you know, a little of that goes a long way. <laughs> The old Marshall Tucker Band, Rhonda, I remember playing that on the guitar and singing that when I was in my wilder days. We used to get together, and, and, and my taste in music is that kind of music as far as the old music. Uh, I listen to a little of country. There's a, there's a lot of country that I like, the older stuff, from the 90s back into the 80s, uh, and even some back on before that. And it's, it's not like the whole work. It's just there's some songs here, there, and young that I really like. But my music was Marshall Tucker, the Almond Brothers, Leonard Skinner. I mean, all of that stuff is what I really liked. And then in my wilder days, I, I, I listened to a lot of Poison and ACDC and a lot of that stuff. But I just, music is not something that my life, used to my life revolved around it. I sat, y'all, in my drinking days, I sat and drank. All afternoon and end of the night, listening to radio music over and over and over and and singing karaoke right by myself down there. I mean, I just, so, I, I you know, but after I got, I don't know, music's just, and I'll tell you one thing, you have to be careful with music. Music is preaching a message into you that will change your mood and change your way of thinking and you not even realizing it. You see all these people today walking around that hate everybody and mad at everybody, and they just, I mean, just, well, it's because a lot of the stuff they listening to, it, it changes your thinking pattern. So I'll be careful of what I listen to. I couldn't sit here and listen to the old albums I used to listen to without starting to drift back to probably the old party attitude. I mean, because it's, it's, it's speaking to you. And that's what it's there for. Um, so, it, you know, a little music is okay, but if you get to listening to a lot of it, it will it will start working on you. So be careful of what you listen to a lot of. And if you're having trouble with anger issues, you need to change your music station. I mean, if you listen to nothing but death metal all the time, you're going to have anger problems. If you listen to a lot of rap that's about shooting and killing and all that, you're going to have some anger problems. I mean, you just, that's just a fact. You can't listen to the London Symphony Orchestra all day long and still want to fight at the end of the day. It just ain't going to work that way. <laughs> John Hartford, I have heard of him. Toy Caldwin. I don't reckon I've heard of him. Need a library in every home. I tell you, all I've got a library. I don't. I need to count how many books I've got. I have got bookshelves. I've got four bookshelves. Five. I've got five bookshelves. Slam full of books, and we steadily buying books. I mean, that's our thing. We go to thrift stores. If I see, and a lot of it now is just collecting books. I mean, because there's no way I read all of what I got now. And I love books. I love books. I like the classics. I like the classic authors. And uh, I like John Grisham, but he's probably only one of the only modern writers that I really kind of buy his books. Uh, I just hadn't found a lot of new stuff. I, now the problem is, is everything that you buy modern today that's written has got too much political influence. It's somebody's political opinion. I, I, Please leave your politics out of everything. I don't care what you agree with or disagree with. I mean, we have to get on some narrative about something. It, you know, I mean, if, if the government would stay out of this climate change deal, people might would would consider it. But when the government gets involved with it, well, that rules out most people right there because we really need less government, you know. I just... 
I'm for less government across the board. If we could get rid of both political parties and start over, I think we'd all be better off. That's, that's my politics right there. If you want to know where I stand on politics, let's get rid of both parties and start over, and I'm with you. <laughs> but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Tony Caldwell was in Marshall Tucker. I did not know that, so that's good to know. I just, I, you know, I didn't, um, I guess Marshall Tucker and the Almond Brothers and Steve Miller and all of those bands, I never really got into the, like, who was who of who. I knew who the guys in Leonard Skinner was, some of them, but I, you know, aside from a guitar player alone, when I was playing guitar, I I mean, I couldn't tell you now who. I knew the lead singer of some of the heavier bands when I was in my teenage years, you know. I mean, I knew Aerosmith and Who Sung from Poison and all them. Poison was one of the bands I liked. Them and ACD was probably two of my favorites at one time. And then I, I mellowed out, and I and somewhere around 16, 15, 16, I was more into the Marshall Tucker and... And then when I got 17, 18, I was, and then I went through this period of heavy drug use, and I we listened to I don't know what all. But now, that was along the time that Matchbox 20 came out in like 97, 98, 99, was in my high school years. And, and we went hard into, you know, the Goo Goo Dolls, Matchbox 20, Three Doors Down, Third Eye Blind, you know, all these good bands that now there's not even a genre of music for it. I mean, you know, what, what happened to Pearl Jam? What happened to all these great bands that were back then that don't even have a music like that anymore? I guess all of it's country now. Chris, when you start talking about old country, now I come back from my daddy walking across the yard singing Hank Williams. He'd start off on I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry. Hear that lonesome whippoorwill. He sounds too blue to fly. And a midnight train whining by. I'm so lonesome I could cry. I liked Nickelback. I really did. And I don't know why everybody else seems to think you're supposed to hate them, but I thought they was a great band. Diana, you love your e-reader. I'm going to be honest with you what I'm a fan of, and that's the Scribd app. You can do all your e-reading on it. It has a lot of books, but you can listen to a lot of the older classics. There's a lot of stuff. And I'm a fan of listening to a book. While I make pottery, that's when I consume most of my books. I do like to read, but I'm trying to get back into my routine of Bible reading every morning. So I'm reading the New King James Version. Yeah, I'm a King James man myself. But for the readability, you, you just for daily reading, you're not losing a lot, and it's a lot smoother read, like to just read. It's and, and I don't think the New King James took out as much as some of the other versions. And y'all, I have never read the ESV, uh, the English Standard Version. I wanted to read one of them to see what it was different in it, but... I'm a diehard King James man. If I'm going to do Bible study and preach, it's going to be from the King James Version. And I like the King James. I like the poetic way it is written. written. But something new and different, you know, kind of helps your, your reading. So I'm trying to get back into my routine of Bible reading in the morning. So I'm reading it, and then 
in the afternoons, I like to, if I've got time, but here lately, I ain't been doing that, but editing videos and working on that kind of stuff. So I hadn't got time to read. I had a book that I had started reading and I laid it down and it was Zane Gray's book, one of them. And I, I don't know, it just, it didn't suck me in, I reckon. Yeah, Tommy, one of the, the girls up here is married to uh, that guy from Three Doors Down, the lead singer. One of the girls that I went to school with. Saw David Allen Coe in a bar in Columbus, Ohio. Look what the cat drug in. There's Jeff. Rhonda, the 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 iPad is I the Takata Bible app. Yeah, I have listened. I've listened to the Bible completely through on it several times, especially with that dramatic reading where they got the sound effects and all goes with it. They get a little carried away on some of that, I might say. But it um, uh, Larry, we'll see you later. Um. But I have, I do like to listen to it, but I, I just, I'm trying to get back into my reading it routine. I don't know, I just, I enjoy that. But I'm I'm a physical book person. I like the smell of the pages. I like the, the, and I like the book sitting on the bookshelf. I just, I don't know. It ain't that it's a better experience. It's, it's just what I like. Uh, I'm old school with a lot of stuff. I'm not, I don't frown on somebody else for having a different way of wanting to do it. Uh, that's like Bible versions with the, with the King James, that is the, the, the mile marker that we have for Bible. Now you've got all these new versions where they're getting the, every time you translate it, you lose a little something. It may not be drastic, but you lose a little. Well, the first thing you've got to consider is the King James Version was already translated from a lot. So there was some stuff lost when it got translated. So, you know, to sit here and say it's the Word of God, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I don't view the Bible as a book of word for word, this is God speaking. you got human element from the original manuscripts. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell you what Jesus said, and every one of them words it just a little bit different. So you can't build a faith on the red letter writings saying, well, this is exactly what, because it is not exactly what Jesus said. It is what they remembered. Well, Jesus told them this, and they wrote it down in their interpretation. So you have to go off of the story it's telling, not the word for word for word and build, you know, a doctrine off of, well, it's worded like this, and this word means that. You can't do that. The Bible is not meant to work that way. I don't care what theologian said it was. Because if it was meant that way, the red letters in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would all be precisely exactly the same thing in all four books, and they're not. And that's as far as you can take that argument any way you want to look at it. So... When you get the Bible translations, it don't really bother me to read one of the newer translations because in my mind, I know that, hey, they, some things could be lost. But still, I am reading the story about the creation of the world and the history of religion and the encounter of Jesus, the prophecy that Jesus was coming, Jesus was born, and he changed the plan of salvation, and he left us this church, and then here's this whole books of instructions that he preached through people to give men the way they should live their lives. And that's the story of the Bible in a nutshell. 
And there's a lot of little stuff that went on that give you parallels into the mind of God. All the Old Testament, God's thought pattern is the same. He intends for the same way of life to be lived. And that's like somebody commented earlier something about not eating pork. And, you know, I mean, if somebody feels like, well, you know, I don't want to eat this or eat that, well, you do what you want to. I mean, it's not going to be wrong for you to not eat something because you want to make this sacrifice or the Bible says this about it. Jesus, or God, gave those don't eat these foods for the reason that they really weren't healthy for the body and he wanted his people to be as strong and as healthy as possible. So cut out all this garbage food that is not healthy for you. And he talked about the lamb flowing with milk and honey and, and he talked about bread. And so if you eat, my daddy always told me, he said, son, if you'll eat the Bible foods, you'll be healthy. And my daddy's been a healthy man and he's 80 plus years old now and he's pretty healthy and still works all day every day so that is a testament within itself and i believe that i believe if you'll eat you know milk drink milk and eat honey and and eat the things that the bible talked about beef and different things that you'll be healthier and it talked about pork pork is not good for us i mean it is a fact pork is not good for us but it is not a sin anymore either i mean you're not going to go to hell because you eat pork but now to sit here and tell you that eating pork is a good idea, probably not. Probably going to kill us all with a heart attack at some point, you know. So there's a reason that God said abstain from these things. And he kind of made it spiritual at that point, wanted them to have sacrifice. But, you know, at this point, it's not. When when he when he rent the veil in the temple and he rose again on the third day, he changed everything on the plan of salvation. It's no longer about the physical actions that bring you salvation. Now your physical actions are a result of your salvation. So you I'm saying before the cross, your, your actions is what brought you salvation. My blood sacrifice, my abstaining from these foods, my, this, my, my works is what gave me salvation. Now we have salvation, and because we have salvation, the fruit of our salvation is these works. So it's not so much as abstaining from what you eat. It's, it's you know, more into the body because then now he says your body is a temple, not, not the, the structure is a temple where we went and made blood sacrifices on the porch of the altar and, you know, went through the rituals there. Now your body is the and your body is a sacrifice. So now it's more about the sacrifice is more about what I do with this body. There's things of this body that I don't do with it because it is a holy temple. And those are those are kind of my viewpoints on how all that come about. I have not heard of the legacy standard Bible. What is your thoughts on it, Ken, so far? How much of it have you read? I would be interested in that. Tony Parker, good to see you, buddy. David Budaki. Well, I'm going to tell y'all my reason for liking paper books, and it is because I feel like at some point in time we are going to see hard times. The Bible talks about the tribulation period and all this stuff. There's always the threat of attack or whatever, and, and if the Internet is gone or if the, the electricity grid goes down, with a paper book there is some knowledge that you just you still have. And I think everybody... I said, I think everybody should have some hard copies of some basic books. You need a real Bible. You need a real medicinal plant book. You just need some how-to book knowledge. I think a, a basic book on gardening would be an, a, a book that you should have on a bookshelf somewhere. I mean, there's just some things that you need to have hard copy of. Nobody can take it away other than a house fire, obviously. And that's, but that's the reason I like um, 
physical copies of books. Uh, it's if something goes wrong, I still got them. And one of my deals is, is if we the power grids took down, I mean, I've got a lot of old classic books and literature and all this stuff that will be entertainment for me when we no longer have TV and no longer have internet or whatever. I mean, we may always have internet and TV. I ain't no prophet of doom or, you know, looking forward to the end of the world. I just, you know, I want to be prepared in case it happens. So... But I, you know, the e-readers is by far the, the most practical way today to, to read books. I, there's no doubt about that. And I've got books on my iPad here. I, I don't read them as much. No, it's, and the reason I'm not going to build a fire Triton... It's because everything out here is soaking wet. But if you look behind me, you see this metal frame thing sitting back here, y'all? That is, it has a slope to it. We're going to wrap that with tin, and that is going to be my temporary fireplace and my attempt to make smoke draft up and out. going to build me a little round chimney pipe out of it and everything and get it out. Because otherwise, when I build a fire, it just smokes up under here bad. And I have I have gotten low on kindling. I have not replenished my kindling as of recent because we hadn't built a lot of fires. And it just has gotten chilly. Would be a good night for a fire, but I just didn't. Everything's wet. Just didn't build one. Black mustard, grateful. I have eaten them. I mean, I, they they have a reddishy taste. But now we don't just plant them. Charlie Phillips, thank you, brother. And Eli, yes. Six new books that have not been cracked yet. They will go in the camper for camping times. Need a... Uh, I need to get me some stuff, but now when I go camping, I never have time to sit down. When Brody's here, Brody Brody requires somebody's full attention. He he don't like for people to get to doing something they enjoy, I don't think. <laughs> he, he wants to be number one. I was going to reply to some comments or something last night or night before, and uh when I got everything done and come in and, and was squared away, I went in there and put my fuzzy britches on we call them that's what we call our pajamas because our pajamas all consist of some of them thick fuzzy looking britches that we call them my fuzzy britches <laughs> y'all know what i'm talking about so i put my fuzzy britches on and crawled up in the bed and i had turned richard Jean the fishing machine on and started watching it no what was i watching last i was watching sherlock holmes the old black and white the last two nights i have attempted to watch that and i go to sleep before i get through two episodes but uh i like the old sherlock holmes because i read sherlock i've got all the sherlock holmes stories by sir arthur conan doyle and um Um, I, I, I enjoy those stories and I was watching the old ones, the, the newer ones I like, the, the new movies it's made, but they different. I like the old movies. So I was back watching some of them and, and on, I get, I don't know if they're, I think they're on Tubi. 
If y'all don't have the Tubi app, it has got a lot of the old shows that are good. In fact, I found Dennis the Menace on it the other day. We had rented it. Now I can watch it on, on Tubi. And, uh, but a lot of the old good stuff is on Tubi, seems like. So if you're interested in stuff from the 80s and 90s, you might find it there. Yes, Eli, I, I am Pentecostal by denomination. Uh, is, but I, I try not to focus on denomination a whole lot because it, uh, it can become a hindrance if you're not careful. And, and you start talking about denomination, you start getting a separation among people. Well, they start getting defense. Well, I'm this, or I'm that. And, and I'm going to tell y'all something. And I've said this before, but every religion has flaws. You, you've got to stop and think that all religions believe something different. Well, everybody can't be right. You know, and because they're different. If two people believe two totally different things, well, one of them's got to be wrong. And the, the sad thing about it is those people in both of these denominations that believe it with all their heart. And that is why I drift back to personal experience. And the Bible says work out your own salvation, but too many people leave out the with fear and trembling. Because as we work out our own salvation, we've got to bear in mind that I've got to be very careful and very delicate with this and know that I'm talking to a God that most likely is not going to answer me in an audible voice, but he's going to send me hints and send me feelings and let things around me happen in a way. I've got to make the best out of what I am presented with, and I've got to take this Bible and I've got to read it and do my best to interpret it. Well, when you've got preachers screaming at you about you need to think this and you this is right and this is the only way. And at that moment, I'm like, hold up, brother. There's 500 other preachers screaming 500 other different things. So you've got to be able to, to sit down and shut all of them out and dig into this Bible and figure out, God, what do you want me to believe? And I've got to be sensitive enough with my spirit that when God impresses things on me, I don't miss that or misinterpret it. And y'all, we 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 not going to get to just ease through this life real casually and make it to heaven. I think there's a lot of us that are doing things half-heartedly at best and we're all going to have to fix that so when you start talking about denomination at this point I really don't focus on denomination uh, because they is, I, I, I will say this the only thing that I look towards in the Pentecostal that I like is the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues because that is what happened in the book of Acts and I firmly believe that I can't sit here and tell you, I, it's been preached all my life, that if you don't have this experience, you go into hell. Uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that very well may be the case. The Bible don't just say that, but I lean, I, I'm not going to say it's not true because I don't, the thing is only God knows who he's going to put where. So there's that. But I do look at the fact that that happened all through the New Testament after it was poured out that day on the day of Pentecost. And I think that is necessary experience to have to make it through life, not, not to get into heaven. I think whenever people are trying to figure out what it takes to get into heaven, you've missed it already. You're probably not going to make it because you're looking for the bare minimum. I'm not looking to do the bare minimum to barely make it into heaven. I'm looking for the max I can do for the man that gave his life for me that I could be delivered from alcohol, that I no longer have to sit out there in a shed by myself and drink all night 
because my mind was twisted into a way that I loved that more than I loved the life I'm living now. Well, now I'm sobered up and delivered of all that mess that I can see clearly, and I'm like, oh, Lord, how did I like that? And that happens with a lot of different things in life. Well, people's, people that claim that they, you know, they're, they like the same sex. Well, that's because you've got a, a spirit that has twisted your mind into thinking that, that that's the best way and that you like. It's like the drug addict. He loves those drugs. He can't see that they're destroying his life. The alcoholic is doing the same thing. So you have to, and that, that infilling of the spirit with the speaking of tongues is what separated me from that. So I'm firm in, in saying that everybody should have this just to have a good life right now. You see what I'm saying? Not everybody should have this to get into heaven. You need to have this experience to make life easier right now for you to help you to be able to interpret scripture because that spirit and that experience is what unlocked this Bible for me to be able to understand it. So that now when I read it, I'm like, oh, I know what that's saying. Now it's speaking into my heart. So, you know, that's kind of the way I look at it. It's, it's when people start talking about, well, what is necessary for salvation? Well, you've already messed up. You, If you're just trying to figure out what it takes to get to heaven, you're missing the whole point. You probably ain't going to make it because you want to do just enough to get by and see what all else you can get away with. You most likely ain't going to make it. I mean, that's just blunt, but it's the truth. Don't live for God trying to just do enough to get into heaven. You're going to squeeze through the gates. When the Bible starts talking, about things that the, that the Lord ain't happy with, when it starts talking about costly array and jewelry and adorning yourself with gold and all this stuff, just leave all that mess alone and, and don't take the risk. Don't say, well, I think it's th uh, this is okay or that's, does it matter? You, if it's questionable, just leave it alone. It's not, it's not going to help you here in this world. You know, I mean... So <laughs> I don't have any problem with it. If I think something's wrong, well, I'm not going to have anything to do with it if I can help it because I struggle with enough that I know is wrong, that's tempting, that I fight. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just, it it baffles me that people want to try to figure out, well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, if they, you know, uh, four or five denominations of religions that adamantly believe this is a sin and it's wrong, well, I'm going, well, you know, there's got to be a reason that they think it might be wrong. That's like the old-time preachers back years ago, and they preached against TV. All TV's of the devil. Well, you know, there was a lot of people that argued with them, well, oh, ain't nothing wrong with TV. TV ain't going to put you in hell. Well, now as I stand here and look at it, you can't preach against TV no more because we all got this. I mean, you, you got a phone. It's way worse, you know. But I can look back at their day and time and see where they was right. Because TV separated a lot of families. TV rearranged people's living rooms. The, the furniture, y'all think about this. The furniture used to sit all the way around the living room with a coffee table in the center. And people sat down and actually had conversations inside their living rooms. Now all the furniture is on one side of the room and the TV is on the other. It rearranged people's living rooms. Not only that, it pumped into their minds. All They got real comfortable with all kind of stuff, and that is part of what sped up this process of us just really getting numb to things. Like a murder can happen now, and we're like, well, so-and-so got killed. We're back in those days, somebody got murdered, and they were like, what? Uh, oh, my Lord, how horrible. Well, we've got so comfortable with it, it ain't a big deal anymore. You know? I mean, I, my mama... To this day, if she hears about somebody that drinks a lot, she's oh, whoa. Well, now it's so normal. I see somebody with a beer or alcohol or whiskey. I don't think nothing about it. It's because we have brought it into our homes and got real comfortable with it to where it don't bother us no more. Well, the next thing is, is we brought in, forgive me for saying this, but sex into our home on the TV. Not maybe the actual act, but the, the attraction and people with no clothes on. And well, back in the fifties, you didn't walk around with no clothes on. 
but now they're on the TV in our living room in the commercials. They barely got enough to cover their unmentionables up, and we wonder why we've got the problems going on. We've got, well, well, we didn't see nothing wrong with TV. So I can look back and see where them preachers that preached against TV really wasn't wrong, you know? But now some of them got talked at pretty hard because they was so strict, you know? Well, they, you know... <laughs> They had a, a good reason for preaching against what, because it really didn't benefit nobody. Now, social media is probably the big demon today, but now you take this, what we're doing right now, I'm using for good what a lot of people are using for evil. So, you know, you can, you can, you can dig through the mud and find a diamond alone, but you got to look at your hands. You're going to have to wash them pretty regular. So that's social media for you. That's the way you look at it. That's the best analogy I can give you. You can find a diamond in it, but your hands is going to get dirty. So keep your hands washed. In other words, when you get on the stuff, it ain't, you know, I don't know about this cat. Just delete it, get it away, get rid of it. You're going to have to be a good guard of this heart if you make it into heaven. You're not going to get there by just, well, it's all right. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. That, that attitude's not going to get you there. All right, I missed the book we're talking about. I'm trying. I know somebody mentioned the Foxfire books. I have all the Foxfire books. I've got, well, I've got one through nine anyway. Oh. Um. Okay. Modern Herbal dispensatory y'all i have got a book that i am in the process of getting printed out it is uh herbs for you and it's a expensive book some one of y'all somebody i don't know if they're still watching or what sent me a pdf it's two books well i pulled up the book on amazon and it was like thirteen hundred dollars so I've got a, but now it's like 250 pages. Well, this time you buy enough ink to print all that out, you know, it's pretty expensive. But we've got a laser jet printer in there that's like a commercial printer. I've got to order an ink cartridge. The ink cartridge for it's $115. I'm going to get that in there and I'm going to print that book out. I've already got a binder. I've already got the plastic sleeves to put the pages in. And we're going to print it all out and here in the near future and i'm gonna have a new book to do medicinal plants I, from what i looked at it it has a lot of in-depth information the cheapest book i saw was 700 dollars used y'all that's outrageous for books so it's got to be valuable so <clears throat> if i ever get that printed out and and figure out what's in it if somebody was to want one for a small phenomenal fee we might could make that happen as in a binder with papers in a sleeve but now it ain't going to be cheap because there's a lot of effort and in, in going into to doing it. And I could probably get in trouble for selling it, I, I I would imagine. But I wouldn't be selling it. I'd give you a copy. And, you know, you just make a certain amount donation to the ministry of herbal mess. <laughs> you know what I mean? That sounds like a good idea. Muzzle Madness. I can tell you the first thing for a tip is you're going to have a lot of, of, of struggle with YouTube on, on your content. They hate guns. And that's one of the reasons I don't do a lot of gun videos. Now, I make whatever video I want to make. I hadn't caught any bad flack for it now. 
but you do have to be careful. If you if you dismantle a gun, you won't never be able to monetize that. I mean, if you take it apart to clean it or anything like that, they call that weapons modification, and I, they don't want you sharing that knowledge. So, I, you know, but now those, like, Hickok 45 has been there for years. He shoots guns constantly. So, I mean, you can do it. You can make it happen. Oh. But like I said earlier on the YouTube channel, don't watch the numbers. Don't watch the growth. Do it because you love it. Do it because you enjoy it and watch your own videos. If you'll watch your videos, you'll learn a lot about you. You'll learn a lot about the process, and, and you'll figure out, well, you know, if I ain't want to watch this after I done partly seen it, most likely ain't nobody else want to watch it, and you start learning what all to cut out and delete out. Ken, I don't think we can be tricked into the mark of the beast. I don't think that's something that somebody's going to trick you into. I think you're going to well know that you're making an allegiance to a group of people. I think you're going to be branded as I'm one of these people. And you're going to know what you're doing. What they're going to force you into is if you've got family and kids that you're trying to feed you're going to struggle to watch them starve to death and you can't feed them and buy what they need and you'll take that mark and allegiance with that people to be able to buy and sell because you won't be able to buy or sell or trade. And it's going to be a digital thing. Uh, so, but And it could very possibly be a computer chip in your hand or your forehead and it may be something. They may literally start branding us on the forehead. Who knows? Uh, but... At some point, you're going to make that conscious decision. I don't think God is going to put people in hell that were tricked into a mark of the beast. Now, it says the very elect will be deceived, but I think that deceit is in belief. Uh, because I, I think that's in Bible theology and stuff. It says the very elect shall be deceived. I think... I think that has a lot to do with, with salvation and and really I think a lot of it has to do with people thinking everything's okay, that, that our actions don't matter and the way we dress and the way we present. One of the biggest things that I see today as being a problem in religion. Oh, uh, and I don't I keep getting back on religion. I don't know why, but anyway. It is like with women's clothes. It's we we preach here, you know, women's not to wear that to pertain it to a man. So we, you know, women needs to wear a dress and a man wear pants. Well, the fact of the matter is, is a woman can put on a dress that's skin tight. That you know, a young man in our church the other night made the analogy. Said if she's got a quarter in her back pocket and you can see, you know, the date read the date on it through her clothes, it's that's not holy. You know, and here's the reason is men look at a woman, a, a woman's what, what motivates a man, let's say it cleanly, is what he sees. What really motivates a woman is, is what she feels emotionally and physically. You can talk to a woman in a way to, to encourage, you know, um, but a man is more triggered by what he's looking at. That's the first thing that's going to that's gonna gear him up every time. So that's why the way a woman dresses is very important because whether you think you are or not, you're, you're, I mean, it's just, so what's holy is, is not necessarily exactly in my mouth. What it is, it's how it's worn. It needs to be modest. It don't need to show ever curve. It don't need to show, you know, I mean, I know you women wants to look pretty, but when you're encouraging a man to think bad, and I had a woman one day, she said, well, you know, a woman ought to be able to walk down the street naked if she want to, and a man not, said, that ain't a reason to say a man raped. I'm like, it may not be the, he may ought to not, not, I don't believe in a man raping a woman. I mean, obviously, but you know, to sit here and say, well, the way she was dressed is the reason he raped her. Well, you know, it may be, but the analogy that I put with that was, well, you know, you know it's wrong to steal money too, but you put your money in a safe 
You don't just lay your $100 bill up on the dash of your car and go in the store and come back and think it's still going to be there. You know, I mean, we know there's criminals. We know there's bad people. So, yeah, the way a woman dresses could provoke a man that's already thinking, hey, I may just rape me a woman if I want to, you know. Well, he's not going to pick the ugliest one, I don't think, or one that don't not look a, appealing to him. He's going to pick the one that, that catches his eye. I mean, that's just kind of a natural thing. So that's why the reason I say all that is is the way a woman dresses plays a lot of effect on other people. And the Bible says, you know, if you've offended somebody, if you offended the least of these, you've done it to me. So we have to be careful what we do. That's just like me. I have to watch what I say because you could be real flirty in videos or in whatever and and attract a woman that you really didn't intend to. But if you've made her have feelings and thoughts and all this stuff, and you've done that a purpose, I think that's wrong, you know? You say, oh, I was just flirting. That was innocent. I really wasn't. Well, was it? I, you know, I don't think so. So it's, it, it gets into a deep rat hole of things that you can go, and it's not to sit here and say, well, if you do this, you're going to hell over. If you do this, you're... no, it ain't really about that. It, it's about the quality of life that we're, having here on this earth and if we can eliminate as many problems by the way we dress and the way we act well that's the best route that's the best way to get there so you know that's like me with my garden i don't like fighting bugs in my garden well the year i put all that leaf litter in there i had bugs everywhere so you know what to keep from fighting that I'm not going to keep putting leaf litter in there and trying to figure out how to kill the bugs. The best thing to do is to rake all that mess out and just till it up and be done with it, and I don't have as many bug problems. You see what I'm saying? That's that's kind of the way this works. If it makes sense. I don't know. It, it, it could get... Anyway. No, we don't do any Bible quizzing or, or anything at our church. We don't... Diana, I could probably email you that PDF, I think. I don't know. And the Foxfire books, Cindy, I got them off of eBay, most of them. Now, I found a bunch of them in thrift stores as I was going around, and I occasionally still see one here, there, and yonder, but not. Yeah, grape lead, most of them wore robes. And I think when you really translate into the Greek where it starts talking about a woman's garment, it was basically a loose flowing gown was what it recommended. And, and that translation of, of the writings, because uh, I have done some research on it back in, in the past because I had been asked that question a lot. And I, I think it is important important for a woman to wear a loose flowing garment of some description uh, to sit here and say the fact that it has pants or not that you know you're going to heaven or hell I, the bible don't say that you know but one thing you get back into is the identity crisis that we have today with people not knowing if they are a male or a female goes all the way back to when the first woman decided to wear pants was so that she could impersonate a man. Well, now women are not wearing pants to impersonate a man, but that spirit has still stayed and followed. So you know, you 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 have to make you you have to make your mind up where you stand on it. I mean, I. Yes, Diana, they both wore robes, I would think. Now, I, and and so to sit here and and try to say what's what, you know, I would my biggest argument with with a with that a lady should wear a dress is 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 the identity deal. And it's because you look on the bathroom door of every bathroom in America, and every woman is represented by a dress and a man represented by pants. Now, that may be slowly starting to change, but it's been that way for, 
all my life. Um, you know, so is it about identity or is it about modesty or is it about, you know, the only scripture that we have to, to base it off of is for a woman to not wear that which pertaineth to a man, which really kind of says uh, not to impersonate the other. So, you know, I mean, there's one scripture that says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Well, then I see all these people like Phil Robertson on them. I've got all the respect for them in the world. Do a great work for God, have a great testimony and a great message, and I think are good Christian people, yet there they are with all that long hair. And the Bible is very clear that it's a shame for a man to have long hair. So what, you know, everybody has a different understanding and a different interpretation Am I going to sit here and say, well, Phil Robertson's going to hell because he's got long hair? I don't necessarily know that either, you know. It may not be a heaven or hell issue. It may just be, well, it's a shame, <laughs> you know. I mean, so I try to be careful on how I, I don't try to force my opinion or my understanding on people unless I know that the Bible says this for a fact. You know what I'm saying? So, Yeah, Rhonda, it, it flirting is 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 feelings that are being expressed in a way, regardless of how somebody wants to look at it or admit. And the fact of the matter is, is we all flirt a little bit, and we all attracted to other people a little bit. Uh, it, it's it's it, they so much, and these spiritual talks can go into some. No, our church does not do Bible quizzing. No, 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 no. I have never done any Bible quizzing. I, and I don't know of any churches around that do any of it, really. Yeah, Triple Creek, it says for a woman not to pray without her head covered, and that it's better to shave her head or to pray. But it says, but her hair is given her as a covering. And it talks about... Uh, It, it, there's, there's a lot of talk about women and, and cut hair. It says for it is a shame for a woman to... to uh, I can't remember now exactly how it's worded now. It's in 2 Corinthians, if I'm not mistaken, like chapter 11 or somewhere. But it talks about the hair being given her as her covering because it talks about a man praying with his head covered. And I've got several people that have jumped on me about wearing this do-rag when I do just in time. They, it just Some people, it just grates a nerve, so I just block them. I, I, don't, I don't argue with them because it don't say... You know, preaching. It says praying or prophesying, and I'm doing neither of the two. I'm just talking to you, basically, you know. Uh, and if God ever convicts me about it, I, I by all means pull it off. And these times while I'm preaching, I feel, you know, the anoint. If I start feel the anointing and feel like I'm preaching, I pull it off. I, I do it naturally. Uh, but I have never went to church and wore anything in a church. Never wore a hat. Oh. So, I, you know, and, and that's like denominations, like our denomination don't like a man to have a beard. So I shave mine. Of course, I don't have a problem with that. It don't bother me to shave one because the church thinks that you should. I find nowhere in the Bible that it really talks about a beard being wrong. So do I think if you got a beard, that's wrong? No. I, I mean, Jesus had a beard. They plucked his beard. So, But, you know, also don't have a rebellious spirit either. If if my church says, you know, we really don't like a man to, well, okay, no big deal for me. You see what I'm saying? 
So it ain't that, hey, I think if I grow a beard, I'm going to hell. I think I could grow a full beard and it not matter to nobody, not be none of their business what I do because the Bible don't say it's wrong. But if I just say, well, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what they think. Well, that ain't right. So it's easier for me just to shave and say, no big deal for me, you know. If that's just a little extra I got to do to get to heaven, I have no problem with it. Boom, shave, beard, done with it, don't matter, move on. You see what I'm saying? And that's the way I look at all of it. My grandpa said I'd rather have too much corn in the crib than not enough, so I'm going to make sure I got too much. Yeah, Rhonda, I, I, my denomination is UPCI now. Uh, but like I said, I, I, if, if, I was, if I was to build a church and start a church of my own, I would go non-denominal. I would not be affiliated with nobody. It would be a standalone church, not affiliated with nobody. And the reason people get into organizations is because of funding and money. And I am totally against the way all of it is handled and run. I mean, just flat out. Now, preaching has become an occupation, not a ministry. And that is where I really stand differed in the organization I'm affiliated with, is the way they do the money, the way they handle missions, the way they do... It, it is a big money-making organization. Is what all And all of them are that way. None of them are different. And if I built a church, I would want to start from the ground up and I want God to bless what I do and start it from nothing. And if it's of the God and of the Lord, he'll take care of it. I, uh, but everybody wants to be associated with this organization or that organization so they can get some funding to help do this and help do that. And The, the only good thing about organization is you can kind of, if you pull visiting preachers in, from your organization, you have a general idea of what they believe and what they're going to preach about. You don't have somebody to get up there and start preaching some off-the-wall message that you're like, what? I don't agree with that. I don't, you know, so as a pastor, you have to kind of be careful about what you allow in your pulpit because that is the people there is what God has placed you in charge of and your their blood is going to be on your hands. So you're responsible for what they're taught and preached and understand. It's your job as a man of God to relay the Bible the best you can, but it's also your job to study it and understand what it's saying. So if I was going to start over tomorrow with a with my own church and domination, there wouldn't be a name on it that, that was as denomination at all. And I know they probably a lot of people that I know would frown on that, but it's it's more over the money handling of it than anything. I just I, I don't I, I don't see. And the fact is, if you're pastoring a church, you have to get paid enough to 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 make a living and survive doing it. And I don't really personally know any preachers that's just making a load of money off of off of the church. But what I do see is is you got a church that's taking in money and they they spend that money on these way off foreign mission type things and neglect the people that's right there in in view of the church. I mean family and friends of the people in that church that are struggling and suffering, they don't help them. But they'll send the money off to help start a church somewhere way off somewhere or, or you know, to help people somewhere way off. And I'm not against helping those people. They need help too. But the, the biggest mission field we got is right here under our feet right now. And I think the money could be better handled. And... And yes, there are some churches that the preachers is just making loads of money and and then they feel like that it's the church's job to do all the outreach and all the stuff that gets done around the church. 
my opinion is if you're the pastor of a church, that church is your occupation and your number one job, and it, it should be your job to maintain the church, to maintain the, the people and, and everything about it. That's your job. It ain't everybody there that's paying you is already working a full-time job. You're the only one that don't have a full-time job, so it don't hurt you to cut the church yard. And that's the way, And but they ain't no, all the preachers that I know, they think, oh, the church ought to cut the church, the, the people ought to do, and they, you know, what are they doing? Anyway, anyway. That's truth, Diana. That is truth. Uncle Sasquatch, have a good night. Yeah, Deaver, it's about the same thing. I'm trying to go back and catch up on what I missed. Rhonda, what was you talking about doing in the chat? I missed, I don't know who, uh, what comment I lost. Oh. I was trying to catch up with, with all the comments while I was talking and carrying on. I didn't know. Uh, I, I get lost in the comments, so I get sidetracked on what conversation is going on here. Anyway, y'all, Lord, Lord, it is still raining out here. We have, it has rained for about 24 hours, and I don't think we've got a half inch. It might be a little over a half inch of rain yet. But I guarantee you this, it has every bit soaked in the ground. It didn't run off like a lot of times it does. A lot of times it'll rain, it'll all run off down the hill. Well, thank you, Rhonda. Have a good night. No, Sean, I never got into gambling. I, I, my biggest extent of gambling, I think I lost twenty or thirty dollars in a poker game at a deer camp. Oh, and that was just amongst friends playing like for quarters, but I, I, we went through the casino one night out here, and I, we, I had about, I don't know, two or three dollars in quarters in my pocket, and Michelle wanted to stick them in a slot machine, and we pulled it and filled up a cup with quarters. I mean, I, we had 50 or 60 dollars worth of quarters. And we st she we went around there and put all of them back in there, and then when that was empty, that was it. So I, the most money I lost at the casino, I've I've spent a I've had a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar bar tabs, but that's about the only money I lost out there. I never got into gambling. 
never attracted me, but now I know some folks that it got the better of and cost them everything they had. But anyway, I imagine y'all, we not going to be on here no whole great long while longer. I need to go relax. I hadn't even edited and got a video ready for tomorrow. I really hadn't filmed that in the last day or so. I spent all morning getting my tires mounted and paying land taxes and squaring away all these odd men things. And, uh, then we rode that one day up to West Point and got pottery supplies, and I've been experimenting with that for the last day or so. So nasty, sloppy weather the last two days. Really wasn't nothing to get outside and film, and I was hoping I would have got that parts for that reel, and I could have filmed putting that together. I do want to make a video It's a funny story unless you was in the card game. What's what's the story? There ain't no telling. Well, we still got 81 people. What y'all want to talk about? I know there's a bunch of y'all what we call lurking. Y'all just sitting in the background not saying nothing. I know some of y'all got to have something you want to hear talked about or questions to ask or something to go on. Because as slow as the chat is getting, we fixing to shut it down. Cindy, I think I'm fixing to go get on my bed. No, I ain't put no plywood under it yet. But I've been sleeping fairly distant since we got that new mattress put on there. I finally drug that other one off today. Well, yesterday. I know the other day when I filmed the video that come out today with that refrigerator, I looked one clip and that other mattress still propped up against the back wall of the house over there. I said, like, I've got to haul that off. And what I done is I hauled it over where we got a, a burn pile and we'll burn the stuff off and then the scrap the metal part can go to the scrap yard we'll haul all that for scrap jenny i don't really know when i'm starting my garden i will tell you this i bought a can of ether today to crank my tractor uh the clutch is stuck in my tractor which i can do my disking up initially with my dad's tractor but i like to have mine ready to do my rows and all uh, now i won't plant seed crops out there in the garden till close to me but i do i am ready to put my potatoes in the ground so when we start getting over toward the new moon somewhere the week within the next week and a half i'll plant my potatoes and i'm gonna put them in a different place this year so i've not heard of a mississippi flush bullfrog tadpoles for catfish. I have not. But now I will say this. I bought some tadpole jigs the other day. They look like a little tadpole in their jigs. I seen them and I'm like, I got to have these. You know, there's one of them. They caught the fishermen type deals. Yeah. I, Glenn, I pulled my knife out. The first blade I pulled out was dull. I don't know what I was... Yeah, Tommy, I'm going to put a piece under it just because I'm curious about it. Yeah, Diana, I would never get crazy. Always try, try to grow some tomatoes because tomatoes are finicky, but they're very rewarding. Tomatoes is probably the most fun to grow. They grow fast and uh, produce a good bit of fruit and nothing better than fresh tomatoes. Uh, but like a lot of people want to grow two or three peas and butter beans. I wouldn't fool with any of that on a small scale because it just... 
you got to have a lot of that to for it to be worth fooling with. Definitely grow some potatoes. Potato is a, a maintenance-free plant. If you plant them just under the soil. Roxanne. I still ain't found Roscoe. Oh. Uh, and you just pick you out a tomato. Find some people in your area and find out what they're growing for tomatoes, and that's probably going to be the best thing to start with. Uh, you can grow anything, but some of them are just going to be more tolerant and do better in your area. Um, the uh, potatoes, and I would grow squash of some kind, like crookneck squash or yellow straight neck. And then cucumbers. Cucumber is a good, if you like cucumbers. Now, obviously, don't never grow anything that you don't like to eat. I mean, that's kind of a given. I grow a lot of corn, but, you know, we really don't eat a lot of corn. Honest to God, we don't eat a lot of corn. And I said, you know what? I, I enjoy growing it. it. It's Corn's like one of the staples that you just grow, but why? We cut up a bunch, and honest to God, 90% of what we put up is still in the freezer. We, I don't know why we don't cook it. I mean, it, we just don't cook a lot of corn. I like peas and cornbread, so for me, peas is the number one thing to plant. And like right now, the, the lettuce and cabbage and all that, well, the problem here is as soon as it starts getting bad hot, all that stuff dies off. So right now, you can get away with planting lettuce and you know, some onions and such as that. But I would find find the things that I was going to eat, and that's what I would focus on. Well, Philip, we're we going to uh, we're going to play with that cooler over the next month or so especially do some camping and stuff and really really get some use out of it and see how it is but as of right now i i know it's got the potential to to make life a lot easier for us now they expensive but you know and the big thing i had some people ask well how much electricity is it gonna burn so uh, one of the things i'm gonna try to do in a future video is or or at least tell in a video what happened is i'm gonna hook it to a battery and see how long that battery will run it just just a battery and that running because if i take it to the swamp down there and hook it to my buggy and it's sitting there and i run the battery down and can't crank the buggy to come home well that's a problem so i you know you need to know how how much juice is this pulling so we're going to test that here, and I may not film testing it, but I will have at least tested it so I can say, hey, it ran. You know, I woke up this morning after we plugged it up all night, and the battery was dead. Wouldn't crank the buggy. Something like that. So I think some of that stuff's important to know. Well, backyard, if you try them, let me know how they were. I don't know where I could catch any, really. Deaver, that was pretty good. A Mississippi flush. I had to remember that one. Squash bugs ate you up. Jenny Bear put that uh, granulated ain't poison every two weeks. Once you get your squash plants up, sprinkle granulated ain't poison around them. That'll keep your squash bugs run away from them. I hadn't planted sweet potatoes. I if I get find some sweet potato slips, I may plant some. I love sweet potatoes. Logan, my truck is an 06 model. I bought it brand new in 06. I think I bought it in January of 06. Usually the new new trucks come out in the fall of the previous year. What size did I get of what? The cooler? I think I bought a 60-something quart, if I'm not mistaken. 
Oh, no, Keith, it won't take long. In fact, my Yeti cooler paid for itself with ice. Uh, me working every day, I bought my Yeti cooler when I was doing metal roofing, and I was literally buying two bags of ice every day, and still by the end of the day, I had hot drinks. And sometimes I was buying another bag of ice on the way home because I was drinking beer, you know, and I'd put another bag of ice in there. So sometimes three bags of ice a day. And when I bought my Yeti cooler, I could put two bags of ice in there and they would last most of the week. Now, you had to keep that cooler cool. You couldn't put two bags of ice in a hot cooler and it last a week. But if I done had ice in there and had the cooler cold and maintaining ice, I could put two bags of ice in there and it would it would last two or three days easy. So yeah, it I I literally sat down and calculated it up. And within a year, my Yeti cooler paid for itself in ice. Seriously, because the ice was $2 a bag. And, I mean, you figure it up. It, it don't take long to come up with a $300. Yeah, Tommy, maybe one day I get me with one of them. I'm... I'm you start to get a lot of people wanting you to pedal all kind of stuff, and I turn down a lot of stuff. I only do reviews on a product that I'm interested in. There's one company, they begging me to do mealworms or something for my chickens, and I just ain't. I don't want to get that stuff in the mail. <laughs> just, you know. Well, Logan, I painted that old truck. It's been a good one. Yeah, she done made her way up here. I don't know where Roscoe's at. He still ain't come home. And I, he may not show up till way over in the morning. I don't know where he's at. Roxanne, where's Roscoe? Well, y'all, it is 10 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? <laughs> I don't know where mine's at. Honest to God, don't. Oh, I do know where Brody's at. He's at his nanos. Well, y'all, I have enjoyed it. We're going to shut it down. I'm going to go in there and check on them chess squares she made in there. I've, I've been thinking about them. So anyway, uh, y'all, I have enjoyed sitting and chatting with you tonight and talking and preaching and whatever else. And, you know, as we talk about religion, y'all, bear in mind a lot of us are going to have different opinions and different views and different understanding. And, uh, I, you know, I, I want you to know I don't look down on anybody if we disagree on things, if we think, well, you know, I don't see it that way. We all still going to work together to get to the same place. Uh, no, I love you. I don't look down on nobody else. If you think different, if you disagree, it's all right. Don't get mad at me because maybe I believe things a little different than you do. I try to be careful with my the way I teach things and the way I present things. Uh, if I really push something, it's because I have really experienced it and really know what I'm talking about with it. And then when you start getting into the frills, I call it the you know, the details of stuff. I try to leave a lot of stuff alone on here. Now, if I was pastoring a church, I would probably preach it differently to a group of people in person in a building, you know. Um, but I don't want to push people away. It's never about being weak in belief or being overbearing in belief. It's about we've got to get to heaven. And I want to take as many people as I can. I want to encourage as many people I can to know that there is a good life living for Jesus. I always viewed religion as, well, it's an old steel, you know, can't do this, can't do that type of thing. And then when I realized that God could really deliver me from alcohol and change my life, 
I fell in love with it, and then it was easy. I, it it didn't wasn't a problem for me to not do things. I didn't want to do it because I seen where doing those things led me down the wrong path. So, a lot of times it's not about heaven or hell. It's about we don't do this because it'll save me a lot of pain and heartache here in this world somewhere in the future if I just kind of leave that alone. And uh, I think a lot of it is that way. So. You know, as we talk about religion on here, I, I try to keep my religion resolved to my just-in-time videos and then a little bit here in, in the lives. I try to keep it, for the most part, out of my... I don't I don't hide it. In other words, I'll tell you I'm going to pray with my food and I love Jesus and praise the Lord in every video. But I don't try to preach to everybody in every video because, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to force it on people. But I do want to keep it available for the people that want it to let you know that it is a wonderful thing. And uh, so anyway, uh, I love all of you. I'm thankful for all of you that has sat here tonight and, and listened to me talk and ramble on. Y'all, I want you to know that I am very humble. Um, it really still blows my mind that there's a hundred people that'll sit down on Friday night for two or three hours and just listen to me talk and, and be interested in my thoughts about things. And guys and gals, I want you to know I appreciate it. I appreciate every one of you that, that watch, that comment, that support this channel, that buy our pottery, that buy t-shirts on Etsy, that buy all this stuff. Y'all, I love you. I thank you for doing it. It means a lot to me. What what good would any of this be if if none of you enjoyed what I was doing? And uh, I, I, I don't do this to try to grow a channel, but I do, at this point, I would like for it to grow. And, and it growing, if it would get to where I could somewhat make us a, a not really a living. You probably ain't never going to just make a living off of it. But if you could get to where it, it made enough to s survive off of, it would allow us to be able to do a lot more stuff and focus a lot more on the YouTube channel uh, as a whole instead of me trying to throw videos together to and still work. You see what I'm saying? So I am somewhat now trying to help it grow. So I have adjusted when I put out videos per the algorithm because it's just, if you put it out in, over an afternoon, you get more views in the first couple hours, which in turn helps YouTube present it to more people. Uh, so that is a little of what I'm doing with that. I'm experimenting with it. I hadn't figured out exactly how everything works with it. So we're, we're doing some experiment to see. The best way for this channel to grow is y'all pick your favorite videos and share them on Facebook. Share them somewhere on, on whatever platforms you use or tell somebody about them or whatever. The word of mouth is probably the only way stuff like this is going to really grow and spread. And by all means, only share what you think is interesting to somebody, what you like. I mean, I make a lot of different content. Everybody's not going to all like all the videos all the time. It's just a given. There's, there's some of you that love the garden and don't care a thing about me skinning a skunk out here. There's some of you that like trapping that's going to be interested in skinning the skunk and you don't care nothing about how I plant a garden. You see what I'm saying? But I enjoy all of it, so I just film what I'm doing and what I'm interested in. And as always, I'll make whatever videos I want to make, not being a smart edit, but... I'm doing the things that I enjoy doing. And you find out there's a lot of people that's interested in a lot of stuff. So there'll always be a big variety of content here. And I, I thank all of you for watching. I love you. I appreciate your support. Good night. Um, so anyway, y'all have a good one. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.